good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the Smoky Saint After Show. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we had ourselves a great time over on Just Pray NYC's channel. In fact, you will find the link to that show in the description down below if you'd like to go see how the first half of this stream is ultimately going to conclude. And we're basically going to pick it up right where we left off. Thank you so much. Welcome to all the new faces that are joining us from my dear brother's channel over there. I hope you guys enjoy the show and find it to be very educational enlightening and also hopefully a bit entertaining as well um i did make a promise to our dear brother mauler that he would get first opportunity to come on in and open up the stream and actually i guess you would say i got set the tone or mood of the show for us moving forward with our conversation here with uh chris lasala ladies and gentlemen in the house to join us chris thank you so much your first time in the smoke room really appreciate you taking the time to stop by appreciate it man thank you for being here uh well Mahler, um as i promised uh please feel free to uh open it up and you can have the first mic go ahead brother thank you for being here you're muted by the way we can't hear you Mahler, if you're speaking Maybe he stepped away. Chris, would you like to introduce uh, yourself to the audience while we're figuring out what's going on with his mic? Uh, just kind of let everybody, some people might not be familiar with who you are, your ministry, what you do, some of your beliefs. My audience might not be completely familiar with it. Would you like to share, give a little bit about yourself? Okay, sure. Um, how you doing, everybody? My name's Chris LaSala. I'm a pastor in Texas. Um, I came to the Lord through getting delivered out of being a drug dealer and a new ager that was dabbling in the occult. And I gave my life to God. I was delivered of demons uh, supernaturally in a small church in New Jersey. And ever since I've entered into the deliverance ministry and I've been doing apologetics in Texas. Okay. Beautiful. And deliverance ministry, uh, can you just kind of give everyone a little bit, some people might not know necessarily what that is, kind of just give a little more elaboration on that for the audience. Deliverance ministry is taking authority in Christ and driving demons out of people's flesh so they could better serve the Lord, so they can, you know, overcome drugs, lose their suicidal thoughts, and basically just hear God better. And uh, it's basically casting out demons. That's what it is. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, uh, Mahler, uh, are you back? Mahler? Uh, okay. Mahler, are you there? <laughs> I hear his mic. Yeah, I'm here. There you go. Did My you? Bad, uh, I, no, you're good, man. I you had to step away for a sec. I yeah, know you had said you kind of wanted to have first word and kind of set. The no, 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 because he was. Yeah, he was taking he was taking us down a path. Sure. Um, I was trying to understand. Well, I just had Chris saying. introduce himself so people who in my audience who might not know him kind of get a, just a general familiarity with him, and that's a good pretense for you to continue. So uh, by all means, I do. We see how we have a couple people in the back. I will bring you guys in, but I want to give Mahler his first opportunity, and we'll cycle people forward. Go ahead, brother. On yeah. Your. So you you were saying, Chris, you're walking me through that you believed that Lucifer when you when you talked about sin in Genesis, you mentioned that. Lucifer, that's the part that I was at that I think then JP talked about the verse where you said, you know, let God be true and every man be a liar. Lucifer, right. is he omnipresent with all of us? Or he, demons are literally his workers? Well, what what demon, does that mean? Demons are his workers, but spirits can also splinter themselves in their essence. It's not that he's omnipresent like God is. I don't believe that. Okay. But I do believe he's omnipresent in the sense that Legion was able to multiply himself. Like when Legion said, I am Legion for we are many. Right. Of course, we are to believe Satan himself, who is the prince of the devils, has that cap capability also where he works like a hive, where he is Satan, but he can splinter his essence. Just like Legion was able to call himself both I and we. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense in that in that in that specific example. Because you know, I don't know the power. So, would you consider yourself an exorcist? Would you say you're a demonologist? What are you? 
I don't call myself an exorcist because of the connotation in the Bible where the exorcists were overtaken and beaten Correct. up by demons, but right. I call myself a deliverance minister. I'm, right. a, I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. I love the Lord. I want to see his people get set free. And uh, I want to teach people what I learned through learning at 30 years old that I had demons. And I want to, I want to teach people about that sin nature that you're talking about because I've seen thousands of people come in with sin nature, then drive out the demon, and then the sin nature is gone. You so, what, so yeah, I would. could you tell us about how it happened to you, how you knew what, when you came to the epiphany, hey, this is not just my nature, this is demons. Well, what, was happen? Happen, what, what, what it was was I was an atheist till I was 30. Okay. I, I was the type of person, if you talked about Jesus, I would make a gay joke and probably mock you and, you know, mock Jesus or whatever. And yeah. I never believed in God. In fact, I if, if someone told me if there was a God and a devil, who would you serve? I, I would have probably said I'll serve the devil if they're if they're even real. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, then I got involved in the occult and I started learning about like, um, you know, these, you know, the, the powerful people of the world and that they worship Lucifer. So I figured I would give it a give it a try, you know, and dabble with uh I built a pyramid in my house. I built a big copper pyramid. And every night I went in there and I, I, I chanted and I called on demons and they would come in my house. They would come into that pyramid and enter my body. And uh, what happened is I tried, I tried to do what's called astral projecting. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Yeah. I've heard of it. Did you do it? Yeah. I used to okay. do it every day and I was, I was doing it almost all the time. And it got to the point where these demons had deceived me that I had full control over that. And I was trying to rob banks uh, through using satanic power by, by, by walking into buildings and trying to grab the money and pull it back into my, my, my house and in, in, back into that pyramid, that portal that I was using to leave my body was that copper pyramid and through the power of the demons. So, so, so it didn't work. Is that why you were deceived? Well, no. Well, it never finally worked. If okay. that, it never finally worked, but it was working that I was literally leaving my body like a ghost every night, and uh, pulling the money back became the problem. <clears throat> so, so what happened was I started to feel like I needed to call on more demons to actually have that kind of power. Right. So, what, what happened was is as this started happening they started to like mess around and like they weren't doing what I wanted and I was getting mad. And then me, I had problems with them and I was like, not, and, and then I think they got angry and they turned on me and they started torturing me and there was nothing I could do to stop it. I, I basically, it felt like I made a deal with like, you know, a spiritual Pablo Escobar and I was outgunned and I was in big trouble and they were torturing me every night. So one night, well, not one night, but I mean, this went on for a year, the torture. Mm -hmm. So one night I just kneeled down and I was like, God, if you're, if, if you're even there, if you're, if, if a God is there and I don't know who you are, I don't, I don't care who you are, but I'll serve you for the rest of my life. If you just stop this, because I, 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 I was so tortured. You're being tormented. Even, I was tormented and no, I was tortured too. And tormented. I was tortured physically by demons. I was okay. raped by demons. I was dragged out of my bed. I was levitated out of my bed. And they tortured me so bad that I, I had to go home at 30 years old and try to sleep next to my father like a little girl. This is how insane they, they drove me. And then that's when eventually, somewhere in that period of time, after Satan came in, the, Satan came in my house. Satan is a red dragon. He, he comes in and he only shows you the left side of his face. So Satan would come in, in my house every night, show me the left side of his face, and you could look into his eyes and you see the blood of the blood of human beings coursing out of he's got a slit pupil like a snake. Okay. Blood of humans flowing out of it. And after after that, after he came in my house and uh threatened me, then two three three consecutive days after that. A legion of demons came and ripped, ripped my soul 
out of my body through the ground each consecutive day, ripping me, dragging me further through the ground before some white light like caught me. And, you know, I pop, I flew back up my soul into my body. And that's when I kneeled down and called out to Jesus Christ and told, well, I didn't call out to Jesus Christ. I called out to a God. To I, didn't, God. I called out to a God. I didn't know. And, and what happened was that night a lamb came. But at, at that point, I didn't know Jesus was called the lamb. I never read the Bible. I didn't mm. know. But a lamb came, right? So when the lamb came, it all stopped. Like it went from torture, like every night I couldn't get an hour of sleep, to the, the, the night I knelt down and called out to God, that lamb came. And then it would like you felt the whole atmosphere. Like you can't even explain it. The atmosphere was so bad. But when you say lamb, Chris, you're saying a vision or was the lamb kind of the way Satan came in your house? Was the lamb in the room with you or is the it a vision? The lamb came into the room okay. and, and, and in a fog, in a mm -hmm. fog. And, the, and there was fog in the room. And the, when the lamb came in with its, with its essence, it controlled the fog. So it would move the fog and show itself. Then it would pull the fog back. So I, I can't explain it, man. All no, I mean, I'm you're not, explaining it perfectly. I don't think I, there's... I'm, I'm trying to explain it the best I can, but explaining it doesn't do it any justice, really. Well, I, I don't think, and I don't think we would be doing any justice if we sat here and said we've experienced anything close to what you have. So maybe when it comes to the supernatural, you're talking about a certain doctrine that, that you do believe now that I guess what we're trying to drill down is where are the difference is. And if, let's say, Smokey is pressing you a little bit, I don't think it behooves you or it's smart, Chris, because what you're saying is I think you're being truthful that those things did happen. But I don't think it's smart for you that when somebody presses you for you to say how many of you cast it out. Because, you, you know, there, JP can attest to this. The reason I jumped on one of JP's lives, that was a few weeks ago. Outside of this, I don't come on lives. I don't do this. The reason I came on is because I heard brothers saying sort of the same context and just out of love. Okay. I'm trying to tell you is if you make that argument, that's not an argument. And if you're going to talk to somebody like Smokey in these contexts, you can, you're, you're much more powerful in extending to them the specifics and what you believe rather than just when you get pressed a little bit, you fire that trigger, and that trigger is going to rub everybody the wrong way because we could flip it back on you and say those things. So right now, what you're explaining to me, that puts it in context. You obviously have some supernatural experience that I can't attest to. But yes. what I would ask you, what I would just ask you is this. Us in the room, give us a ratio. Well, let's say we're all five. We're five Christian brothers. In your racial, in your experience, and I'm just curious, out of the five of us, who has demons in us that you would believe, yeah, it's probably two out of three is the racial I'm coming to. Are you going, no, it's very, it's, it doesn't happen that often that Christians are pro professing Christians. No, no. Or you I, said it happens all the time. I know for a fact all of you have demons. Okay. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> what, we, yeah, that's, that's what we would, that's right. the controversial part. Right. So to walk us through why we sure. all have them. Even yeah, even well, the clean cut, like right. mild mannered. Yeah, I was gonna say even there, TJ, like, what is it? like <laughs> demon of like decency. Like, what's going on with that over there? Like, that's I don't know, Chris. It's uh, talking Chris about TJ. Well, if if Chris talked to my wife, he might be on to something. <laughs> Beckel. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah, no, but walk us through it, man. Why? Why all of us? Well, why? Because again, go go back to it. I'm gonna. I I'll walk you through it again. But about what you said about me calling him out for having no experience. Mm -hmm. It's biblical that people with experience should be the leaders, not some guy that's never done something. No, now, I if, you go, get, if I you go get brain, if you go get brain surgery mm -hmm. and there's two guys in a room and the brain surgeon says, no, we need to cut that over there and sew it onto that. And we need to cut his skull open this way. And right. then another guy who's a janitor who's mm -hmm. never even stepped in a surgical room starts right. coming in and telling everyone how it is, you're not going to let the janitor cut your brain open. Well, here's the difference, though. Here's where This is where you're missing. None of us are telling you that we're coming into your room doing your specialty. What it is is that you're claiming a certain authority that we, at this point, don't understand and we don't believe right. you have because we don't understand it. So for you right. to use, before you've established it, explained it, fly that at Smokey as in you haven't done it, Right. I'm saying is I don't know how many times you use that, but Smokey says you've used it a few times. I'm saying is you're dis you're just taking points away when I believe you can establish it in a right. different way. 
That's I all will. I'm telling you. Okay. I will, and I'm perfectly able to. It's interesting, uh, brother. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I'm able to, but I'm telling you, that's the first thing like Tiger Woods would do if someone walked on the golf cart. I, I get it. it. You know. Well, yeah, but you're we're, we're not at Pebble Beach. This ain't your golf course. Now we're now we're in Smoky Saints room, and he's saying is establish it to me the other way. Don't take it personal and say, well, you how many of you cast out? You haven't. Um, because then we can. With the, I did that because he spoke with authority, like he knows better, and he doesn't. No. Have it. He doesn't. No. Have it. Okay. Well, that that's true, but he's also not. He's not. He's not claiming right, to have do it. His way. Let's do it his way. We'll yeah. do it. Go ahead, smoke. That was what I had. Uh. Okay. Well, sounds good. Well, then let's. Uh. I want to at least give everyone that was here in the room from the last stream the opportunity to engage with Chris for a few minutes and ask some questions. Um. I'd like to reserve Chris until kind of more to closing to kind of have engagement with you, so I can get a better gauge of some of your positions and some of the things that you will present. Do you mind? Is is that? A, and by the way, I really appreciate you being here. You're not obligated. Uh, to spend any more time than you want. I just asked that I could kind of have the final interaction with you, if you don't mind. No problem. This is how okay. we, I feel I bring the truth to people by spending time with them. So Beautiful. And they'll let me get a little more familiar with some of the finer nuanced points of what you believe in your perspective. So I appreciate that. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, I, do you mind? I don't want to turn it into a whole thing. Uh, but maybe if you could give a 30 to 60 second answer, just so I'm kind of familiar. I've heard there's a lot of beef between you and Dore. Can I just get from your perspective, a quick 30, 60 second synopsis of what the issue is from your smokes. point of view? If you don't uh, yeah. mind smokes, uh, I'm yeah. not going to really engage Chris. Cause I that's fine. Chris. Yeah, that, I talk no, to Chris I'm not online obligated online to all the time, And so I don't want to waste my time talking about the same thing over and over so i'll just be here to watch okay well no brother i i want you to be able JP, to ask. we know you're not involved you don't need to jp if no, 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 no 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 if y'all have a direct question feel free to ask if anyone has a direct question or anything well, like JP, that i don't want to cut you out of the mix bro. no 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 no, no. i'm not cut it. i'm not cut i'm i'm literally just watching it suddenly like this is very okay all right. So okay, I'm really enjoying right. my time here. Okay, really man. Am. Okay, that's good. All right. I, I, you know, feel free to jump in and contribute wherever you no, want. No, yeah. If I have to, if Chris gets out of line, okay. I'll make sure to jump in. You know. So, so Mahler got the chance to kind of um, pitch out what he wanted. It looks like it looks like you and JP have lots of chats all the time, Chris. So it looks like you guys have covered lots of ground. It seems. So I'd like to offer up to uh, I guess TJ. Uh, he was here. And then Veckel, I'll hand it over to you. And then we'll start working some of our guests from the back studio into the mix. Um, and well, Chris, am I going to explain the qu the thing you asked me or what? Oh, no, sure. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut off your response. Uh, by yeah, so th this is what happened. I went on Dore Love's show like uh, about eight months ago to deal with a guy named Wally Works who uh, was I'm being... Familiar who sure. was being a complete joke and who I think is always, I didn't joke. expose video of him myself. So I know who you're talking. About. Right. Right. So when I got on there, he disrespected me. So I challenged him to a, a debate anytime he wanted. He wanted to talk to me disrespectfully and then refused to have a debate. So I told him I was going to obliterate his ministry. So I made a YouTube channel about him called breaking a rod of correction over Wally Carlson in which I completely obliterated his doctrine and he was not, unable to respond to any of it and me and dore were kind of like friendly and in agreement that this guy was a joke at that point and we we had an you know i i wanted to make a a, a friendship with dore work um and we we actually did get along that day and then i had another debate with dore where he uh wanted to insinuate that jesus had unclean flesh like fallen man and I found that very disturbing. I had a few debates with Dore. To me, he's biblically illiterate. He has no idea what he's doing. Uh, but we remain friends. And we like I thought we were going to kind of just walk away and not attack each other. But then as more and more of Dore's followers realized that he got obliterated in those debates, I feel his ego. This is my perspective. Dore could disagree. You know, this is just my opinion. Uh, I feel he got obliterated so bad in those debates that he was so embarrassed that he had to slander me and start attacking me publicly to try and like draw people away because he knew people were drawn away from his garbage doctrine when we had the debate. And then he started telling everyone on live streams I was the devil 
I contacted JP. I contacted Dore. I said, look, I don't want to really attack Dore. Please have him stop. As long as he doesn't say anything, I won't do anything. Dore didn't stop. In fact, he doubled down. He got worse. So then we made a channel about him. Well, the, I had a phone call with him, which you could see on the channel I made about him. It's called Reprimanding Dore Love, the Prideful Ignoramus. If you want to see the interactions I've had with Dore, you can see all of it. I've laid it all out for you. It is Dore Love that wants to hide it from you. Dore Love is afraid to debate me. He would get destroyed if he debated me. And that's my position on Dore Love. I'm going to go through every video he ever made from the first video all the way to the last. I've downloaded them all. And me and my team are going to go through them and expose every doctrinal error Dory Love ever made, every grammatical ever, error, every kind of error. Okay? So that's where we're at now. Okay. All right. Um, do you not think that maybe picking apart every single even minutia error might just come across as petty? Or No, no. We are not picking up minute errors. We are picking up blatant misgibberish. He's speaking gibberish. Okay. He's mispronouncing words. He's teaching people Jesus had unclean flesh. He's teaching. So, so is that the main? Is that the main main one that you see? I mean, I'm sure you're gonna find others, but is that that's one that jumped out to you? Like, hey, what are you talking about, Dorian? No, he's also teaching people well, that God will not turn his back on them if they rape and murder. That once they're saved, they're always saved. Yet they can sin. So that's a cheap grace version of once saved, always saved. That Dore Love is articulating. He, that is demonic, and he's a wicked man. Because shall we continue in sin that grace abounds? God forbid. Absolutely not. And Dore Love is a cheap grace teacher, repackaged as a street preacher, and all the other street well, preachers are accepting him because he's got a microphone and a booth. But he does preach a doctrine of repentance. How, how could you say he's like an easy believism or something like watch, that? Well, well, watch the videos where he's... So you're saying them. technically when he gets down to it, you're saying is that you you can essentially... So God will not turn you to to your reprobate mind. He won't cast you out. Essentially, that's not possible. You can, you're you once saved, always saved. Is that what you're saying? If you willfully sin, I believe you never were saved. Where someone like Dore Love will teach you can be saved, and then if you rape and murder, God is merciful; He won't turn His back on you. Ooh. Well, okay, oh, but my question wow. is: okay, if you repent right. from it, He is a free gracer. Then okay, uh, so okay. if you repent from it, though, you you believe that He can forgive you, but of you're course. saying okay, okay. If you, so you're no, saying if, if you repent. And he who puts his hand to the plow and does not look and, and right. looks back is unfit for the kingdom of God. I, I, I'm going to have to research that, Chris. I, I almost believe what you're saying, and I'll tell you why. I've come across these people like just like that recently who do believe that, that you could believe once, then just go straight into demon worship and still be saved and still be saved in that state of affairs. Which and Smokey, is, Smokey's using, you know, more of the, the, the terms that I don't think that you use, Chris, and it's not a knock on you. I'm just saying, cause I don't know these terms either. So free gracer already sounds like it based on the definition yeah. and what you're telling me. Yeah. Well, I necessarily wouldn't, wouldn't ride with them on, on, on any of that. But yeah, I think yeah. in the end, is uh, Chris seems to hold to a position that I can support, which is the idea that sanctification necessarily follows justification. I, Therefore, no, I if you are justified, you in uh, you unavoidably will be sanctified. become sanctified. And I, if I, you I have a uh, invalidation or a lack of sanctification, then you don't have justification. Now, Chris will the position. Well, you never had it. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Never had it. Lost it. Conclusionarily, it's the same thing. Present tense. You don't have it. That's it. Right. So, uh, yeah, Chris, that's fine. I, I actually, just so you know, the, uh, what you present, what you hold to is something I have been using to kind of dismantle the free gracers as well as uh, right. some of the more extreme OSASers. It's called if SAS, which is if saved. Always. That's me. I'm if saved. That always sounds saved. about right then. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. So I'm, not, but, okay. I'm not one saved, though we saved. I'm, I'm persevering. And since you have a Calvinistic perspective, you adopt the doctrine of election. 
uh, which means Absolutely. that you're fully coherent with that particular viewpoint in soteriology. So you don't even have a philosophical contradiction there. So, okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, well, then let's move forward. Uh, I want to be able to open it up for anyone else here. Uh, TJ, uh, and by the way, thank you for taking the time to answer the question. I'll have to look into Dor I've, I mean, I've, I've watched Dory's channel several times before. I have never heard anything that I thought was really way off base, but I will also admit I have not looked into the man in depth. So I will. But Chris, uh, just, just to point out some smoke is he's not street preaching that, correct? I have him on video saying that. You can go on the channel and look at it for yourself. I've laid it out very clearly. Okay, I'll, I'll, I will go do that. I, I yeah. The, the channel name's called Reprimanding Dore Love, the Prideful Ignoramus. Do you now, mind, Chris? Is it too? Would it be possible for you to post the link to the channel in the side chat or the the private chat in here uh, in the yard? Somebody, uh, someone from our church, post it in the chat, please. Okay, that's that works. Yeah, help mods, help them out. Help me uh, get that put in the side chat so that we can review. I, in fact, I might even do that for tomorrow's uh, morning show. Thank you for that, Chris. Okay, let's open for TJ. TJ, uh, do you have any questions or anything you would like to run by uh, Chris? Uh, you seem. Uh, yeah, to yeah. Go ahead. I have at least like one or two verses I, I would like to get his thoughts on. So just to start, First Corinthians six nineteen, it says. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. And so I just want to see where he's coming from. Like, how do he interprets this verse? Yeah, there, there's different kinds of bodies. There's a natural body. There's a spiritual body. Paul said, in my flesh dwells no good thing. And we know the Spirit of God is a good thing. And we know Paul had flesh. So we know that the Holy Spirit was not in his flesh. The reason the Holy Spirit was not in his flesh was because that is the realm of the devil. That there's a law in his members warring against the law of his mind, he said in Romans 7. And that is where the demons are. The body is made of multiple parts. You have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. So when it says your body is the temple of God, this is true. Where are we born again? We are born again in the inner man. We are not born again in the flesh. Why? Because the flesh profits nothing. Why else? Because the flesh lusts against the spirit. Why does the flesh lust against the spirit? Because the spirit's born again and the flesh isn't. Does that answer your question? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Can I ask you uh, just one more verse here? First Peter one eighteen. Well, two uh, two verses one eighteen through nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, "Knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold." but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. So like, how do you interpret the, the part where it says we're, we were ransomed from the futile ways that we inherited? Well, we were, but we know our flesh was not ransomed because the Bible says as grass, it passes away, right? Okay. Well, where do you get the idea that uh, our, our sinful flesh is necessarily demons that are kind of influencing that and that we need to be you know, delivered on a daily basis? Where does that come from? Well, it comes from the Bible and personal experience, a lot of it. Hmm. So let's go into the Bible, because that's what you all want to hear, because it seems like no one's going to trust the fact that thousands of people have witnessed this at our church over the last 10 years. So let's just go into the Bible. The Bible says iniquity was found in Lucifer. That means the spiritual essence of sin is the devil. It's like kind of saying that the devil's essence is the nature of sin. If it was found in Lucifer and it's found in man, then it is part of Lucifer that's in man. Does that make sense? Um, I guess. I feel like you're extrapolating too much on that one verse, though, to say that. Well, we could also go to the other verses where people in the Bible had demons and they were cast out and the nature of mm -hmm. sin had gone out of them. Why did the nature of sin and, and the torment come out of them when the demons came out of them? Yeah, but they weren't well, made perfect, though. They weren't sinlessly perfect, though. Well, I know. That's why I believe there's more than one demon in people. So, so you, you said all of us have demons. Again, not getting personal, but when you make that blanket statement, you say it. You're also not saying that if we were in front of you or if we were saying, you know what, I accept that, Chris, go ahead and take these things out of me. 
you're not saying that every single time, even somebody was willing or even unwilling, I don't know your ministry, that they would come out and every single person. Oh. All right, let me articulate that. That's a great question. Okay. So if you came here and you really believed what I'm talking about and you mm -hmm. believe that your sin nature was caused by demons in your flesh and you really wanted to let it go, mm -hmm. you like I mean in truth, not like you just come and say, I really want it. I mean, right. like we all know when someone really wants to let go of their sin, when they've hit the right. end of the road, every time they'll come out. Yeah. But okay. now if some if someone comes here and they're like, hey, Chris, I love your channel. Um, I'm still smoking cigarettes. Can you drive them out of me? Like some parlor trick? Like, yeah. hey, Chris, you know, like you could, you're a genie. You could, you could make any. No, I'm not God. I have no power within myself other than that what God wants to do in a person's life. That's it, you know? So, although what you're saying is interesting, and again, I don't know if the other brothers want to chime well, in. Well, um, Chris, can I ask something real quick? Uh, do, you, uh, do you have the power to drive the demons out of your own flesh? Yeah, so, yeah I mean, there's sometimes that God makes me submit to a brother so I don't get lifted up in mm. pride where I have to actually go to a brother and be like, look, dude, I got bitterness toward this person and even confess it in the church. Like one thing we do at our church is I sit down and my church prays for me because I sin too. I don't sin on purpose, but I have sin. I'm not perfect. I'm, you know, I, I was a very bad sinner and I've come a long way, but I feel I still have a really long way to go as a Christian. Like us all. Like us all. Yeah. So I, I, I submit to prayer. And people pray for me in my church and they cast demons out of me. And I, and when they have issues and they have sin, we treat it like a demon. And we repeatedly see the results doing that for so many years that it's, n it's no longer a question for anybody here that what I'm trying to hope that you guys would consider is true. Like we are beyond the point where we are guessing that this is, this is a fact, that this sin nature in man, the root of it, the root cause of it, is de is demons, fallen spirits, that have, have have created a hive, not in your spirit, but in your flesh. Your spirit, um, you're still a child of God. You're still born again. You're still beloved of the Father. But it's your flesh, that perishable part of you. That's so, where they live. So, so Chris, if if one was to exercise all of the demons, they would be sinlessly perfect. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, can, can, okay. I, can I explain that biblically? Uh sure. Go ahead. I had a follow up, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So Jesus Christ said, "The ruler of this world cometh, and he has nothing in me." Remember that verse. Someone in, someone from our church in the chat, because guys, I don't read uh, the Bible with the numbers, so I don't know numbers. I know okay. the text, but I don't know numbers, right? Quote it so, again. Quote it again. Jesus said, the ruler of this world cometh, mm -hmm. and he hath nothing in me. Great, great. That was in John. Mm -hmm. And Jesus also said in John mm -hmm. that he does not entrust himself to man, for he knows men and he knows what's in those men. And he, he, he said, all men. So you have Jesus on one hand saying, I have nothing of Satan in me. Mm -hmm. We all know he was sinlessly perfect. We know that his flesh, though it was truly flesh, like our flesh is truly flesh, the, orin, the origin of his true flesh came from the Logos, the word of God, because the word became his flesh in Mary's womb. So when the Logos became that flesh, the origin of where his flesh came from is not the same as the origin of where our flesh came from. The Bible that's, says we were for Oh, Bible, that's that's dangerous, Chris. Because that no, yeah, that's, 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 that sounds yeah, that sounds really uh, no, no, it's it's really wow. not. Well, well, Chris, just so I can explain real quick, here's why it's dangerous. Just real quick, just a quick interjection, and I'll let you continue. Um, the Christ is fully God and fully man. So he need he needs to have the full essence of a man. He can't just be like he can't just have the flesh of like a demigod. 
I didn't like say he was, that. He, I didn't well, say. well, but but it sounds like that's what you're kind of. Well, then you to. have to ask me before you misrepresent my. You have but, to ask well, Chris, I, that's why I'm saying this. I'm saying this to your benefit because this is what it is sounding like that it, it you're well, drawing we, this weird kind of uh, differentiation or dissection of the hypostasis. Let me or, let me, or, or a redefinition me. of what the essence of man is that Christ took on. See, if you diminish the essence of what I Christ didn't. took on. I didn't. Well, well, you're making it sound like he didn't take on the same flesh as the rest of man. No, I said he had the same flesh as us, yet the origin okay. of it came from a different origin. Okay, so hold on, Chris. So the origin of him, the word, where you're grabbing that, so you're saying is that's why it was, what, impossible for him to sin, to be tempted? What are you saying? Okay, no, he was tempted, yet without okay. sin. Okay. He was tempted, yet without sin, the Bible says that. But the origin, because mm -hmm. the word became flesh, and, and instead of it just being a normal human being where they are formed in iniquity, the Bible says, in their okay. mother's womb, because the origin of that human, I believe Jesus was man, and I believe Jesus is our God. Because the origin of that human in Mary's womb, because the origin of his flesh was from the Logos, because we all agree, the word became flesh. We all agree with that. We all agree that when we were born, the word did not become flesh. We all agree we were formed in iniquity. So this is very clear in the Bible, everyone. No one should be making me out to be insane for teaching this. I'm not trying to, Chris, I'm actually trying to be very cordial and conversational with you, which, by the way, if you knew my reputation, would be considered to be uncharacteristic of me. Yeah, that's not so like I, you. I am, I, I am genuinely trying to be sincere yeah. with an approach of understanding what you believe before I levy any real right. serious Then, then, you, then so. if you think I'm going off the rails, ask me if I believe such or this or that, and Look, Chris, thing, please don't take offense. I literally put it in a position to say, Chris, this is what it is seeming like to me. And okay, I know okay. Beckel had yeah, an objection at the like, same yeah. time. So please, let's, I mean, give me a little bit of charity in the sense I was doing yeah, yeah. exactly what you were asking me to do by okay. reiterating what I felt you were communicating. Then I let you clarify, right? I let you clarify. I didn't so, try so, far, straw man so, so far, so good. Okay. Um, what, what Chris, what you're saying is that we don't disagree with that. But when you started to make it sound as though he was some other kind of human in a way, which you didn't say, we're clarifying. So well, take up where you left like, right there. Like, let's say this. We could all agree he was some, he was human, but he we're certainly human. was some other kind of human, right? Yeah. Like, this guy isn't well, like a normal human. This guy well, is the why? divine. Why, 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 why would he be some other kind of human? There's no well, hold, hold on a second. Right? I think what Chris is going to is Psalms 51, where he says we're all born in iniquity, right? From our from our mother, we you know we're conceived in iniquity. And then when you relate that, if I'm if I'm going out of whack here, you tell me. Psalms 51, it's pretty clear. David's pleading, right? David, a man after God's own heart. Then you go to Luke, you go to Matthew, you see the birth, you see what what Mary was brought to, you see the 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 the, the you actually physically walk through it. You're gonna read that that birth was special. So I think what Chris is hitting on, you're not saying that he was a different, you're saying he was a holy, blessed like a prophet, set aside like John was, maybe. What right. you're saying. I'm, I'm saying he was human like us, but nonetheless, mm -hmm. he was also the divine son walking in a human, you know. In, yeah, in, we all got to agree with that. I mean, I don't think we disagree. So. Yeah, you, but you're not saying well, that the physical aspect of him, though, was anything different than what we're made of, though, right? You're not saying no. anything. Like, well, no, are you? no, no, no. Okay, good. You do believe Jesus is that. God, right, Chris? You do believe I, Jesus I believe God. Jesus is my God, but I don't say Jesus is God because that's not in the Bible. The Bible says Jesus is our God, and I'm and I and that's how I refer to Jesus because he's my God. When you say Jesus is God, you leave the Father out in the woods, and you're, he's wondering, no. what about me? Well, hold on. No. Didn't Jesus accept no. worship? Oh, boy. That's oh boy. not Trinitarian person. Oh we could do this. We, we could go oh, here. The, the oh Father, boy. the Son, and the Holy Spirit have all been worshipped at well, various places in Scripture. No, I don't think I don't think he's that arguing. I think and Jesus pointed to the Father as well. So I mean, so just ju just so that I'm clear, Chris, because uh, maybe I'm just going to advance. And the only reason is I want you to wrap up with the demon thing. 
It's yeah, because... and by the way, I just brought a new. We're going to start cycling guests here in in a minute, Mahler. So let's try to make this our final thing, and we'll let Chris have his final word. And we're going to start cycling people from the back studio. Oh, okay, for sure, for sure. I was going to say, so wrapping up the demon thing. So we we all do. If we came sincerely, and again to where you're at, or let's say you're on the road. I don't know. You're doing a road show. I'm not joking around. I'm just saying wherever you are, and we came and say, hey, Chris, I believe that that's happening to me. Help me, you know, pray, pray the father, the power of the son, you know, power of Jesus to take it out of me. You're saying is if we came with that attitude to that place that you've seen it happen thousands of times. And yes. that's why you rest on this, the supernatural experiences that you're having and witnesses as well. And you're saying is based on that premise, you have the spiritual belief that everybody has this is just maybe some it's it's bothering them like it was you obviously i've never experienced that kind of oppression and again i never messed with the occult so i'm not saying i'm better than you man i've done some sick things and that's to say that i didn't go to the occult to do them so don't make me better than you but what i'm trying to get to is even if that is your experience even if it's proven 10 20 000 times i don't know that that is necessarily going to be something that you could speak to a Christian brother, a platform, and necessarily propel those brothers to say, this is a hill that I must climb and I must die on when it comes to how I live my life in the Christian perspective, or let's say the prime is you're not saying that. You don't push this to the point where you tell brothers, brother, you need to repent because you got demons you never got delivered. You don't do that, do you? Well, if I see them in willful sin. Okay, well, that's another thing. You're going to call it out. But just in general, you don't do that, right? No, and I don't okay. force I don't force people to believe that every human being has demons like okay. we believe at this church. Okay. And this is why I don't like Dore Love running his mouth because I tried to treat him like a brother and he wants to twist my arm like he's my authority when in reality he's biblically illiterate and I'm his dad in the faith, basically. I've been doing this twice as long as him. He he I was literally got a lot of followers long before he ever started. And the fact that this guy was running his mouth on that topic and trying to make me out to be a child of Satan over this issue is just based off of his the fact that he got embarrassed in a debate. No, and I know you're wrapping it back around. That's how we got here. And again, I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything. That's why I came yeah. on here to ask you those questions. So I'll let yeah, that's you good. Know. And and I appreciate actually a lot of the clarification, Chris. Thank you. Let's let's. I'm going to start cycling people in from the back because we have had some people in the back studio waiting who I'm sure would like to ask questions and contribute. And by the way, Chris, thank you for taking the time. Don't feel obligated uh, for any set amount. You feel free to bow out whenever you want. But I'm happy to have you as long as you wish. So um, here we have. Uh, who is this? Vice versa. Uh, welcome yeah, to the show. Um, How are you doing? I want to ask Chris this thing. Um, you, you stated that you're a deliverance, you know, in that kind of field, you know. Mm -hmm. But what I wonder is, like, I see, like, I know, I, I don't know if you're aware of, like, Daniel Adams or people like that. I wonder, like, how, like, they put their hands on someone and they start, like, you know, scribbling and going to the floor. or They somehow start speaking in tongues. And you know, I try to follow Christ as best as I can. I, I'm, I'm not fully there yet. But how come I don't have those kind of experiences that deliverance pastors teach? You know. Well, you don't have to speak in tongues. I mean, not everybody has all the gifts. The Bible teaches that one person's given one gift, another person's given another. The Bible does teach we should earnestly covet the greater gifts. So you should be doing that. But you don't have to try to have an experience that you see on TV. That's ridiculous. As long as you love God and you serve him and you repent of your sins and you seek him in prayer for your calling, you don't, you don't have to have those experiences. All right, I hear you, and I understand that. But like sometimes I feel like maybe my faith isn't strong enough or maybe I'm doing something wrong because I'm seeing all these people be delivered from like, alcoholism or from drugs or you know etc cetera, etc cetera. and i kind of feel left out sometimes you know <laughs> well 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 are you are you stuck in something in a torment and a grievous sin like that i don't you see that's where i get lost you were talking earlier about willful sin and you know sins that we are not aware of or whatever right because the old words confusing yeah, the Old Testament divides sin, and the priests in the Old Testament 
um, were judged differently for what's called presumptuous sin than they were judged for sins of ignorance. And all, also in the New Testament, it says, if we sin willfully after we come to the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for us. So therefore, there's two kinds of sins in both Old and New Testament. Now, the kind of sin that's going to destroy your life is the willful sin. The sin that you're blind to and the sin you haven't learned of yet because you're ignorant to it, that's not going to send you to hell. It's the presumptuous sin that's going to send you to hell. The one that you know you're being convicted of, yet you continue to do it. Because if you if, if the Bible says he who sins is of the devil, right? And can I ask you this? Um, can yeah. someone be delivered from presumptuous sin? Yeah, if, if they want to let go, if if it's if they're willing to no longer presumptuously do that sin, and they want right. to get rid of it, yeah. All right, then thank you, um, Smokey. Thanks for having me up. I'll let the next guy. Come sure, up. bro. Thanks for stopping in, man. I hope you got your uh, question answered. I do have a couple things I'll have to uh, ask you myself here moving forward. Thank you, Chris, for that elaboration, and thank you for joining the show. Uh, vice versa, appreciate it. Um, Andre's been waiting in the back for quite a hot minute. Uh, Andre, thank you for being patient. Uh, appreciate you. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the smoke room. Uh, feel free. Uh, introduce yourself. Let us know if you have any questions for anyone on the panel. Take it away. Hey, right on. Thanks for having me. It's a blessing to be here. Uh, I want to just bless this chat and uh, the live. Um, I was watching uh, JP's channel and taught the talk about deliverance. And I strongly come into agreement beside Chris about uh, the deliverance ministry. It's something that I've been working effectively in for the past two years. God has just been revealing, downloading into me, and I I'm doing it and teaching others to do it also. And it is something that Jesus gave us that like the authority and the power, like it says in the gospels of Matthew chapter 12, 16 and 18. And even in the gospel of Mark, it says these signs shall follow them who believe in my name. They will cast out devils. And basically you're confronting darkness because you are the light. And when light shows up, darkness has to leave. And uh, it's just so powerful. And it's just, I always go back to, oh, I feel the Holy Spirit always goes back to reveal to me uh, the uh, parable of the seed. You know, when, when a seed falls on good soil, now it's got to be cultivated, right? You got to, so when you, when the Lord starts. Uh, for, for the sake of not misrepresenting me, because I, I smell a big misrepresentation. And so let me come at you real quickly and push back. Uh, it's all beautiful and dandy that you agree with Chris, but I never said in my life, I never said in my life that the, that the deliverance stuff ceased. And so I said that even in my discussion. So, you know, for you to say that you 100% agree with Chris and, and kind of, just belittle what I spoke about, I think is is a little bit wrong in your part because I've said before that I believe someone can have a demon. Where I disagree with Chris is, is that I believe once it's out, it's out. And I made that very clear, Andre. So um, the difference here is, I don't believe that once it's a demon is out, you have a million more demons and you'll never have, and, and you'll continue to always have demons until you die. I believe that who the sun sets free is free indeed. And once I get those demons out, the demons are out. I never said that deliverance has ceased. I still believe that deliverances still happen today. I still believe that deliverances are still active. I believe demons are real. But I believe once the demon is out, the demon is out. And but I JP, said that very JP, clearly. JP, this guy never said anything about you, bro. Yeah, no, really, bro. I never, ever, ever, ever did, did mention oh, anything because, about that, bro. Oh, no, For no, real. No, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish and I'll make my statement and I'll tell you why I said what I said. Number one, I never debated Chris on this topic. That was Rise. I'm not coming to debate anyone. I'm just coming to share my experience. Oh, well, you can share your experience. I'm, 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 sharing I'm sharing testimony. Well, I hear because the Bible you. says that we must keep the testimonies of God. Hallelujah. Wait, I, Andre, so, I hear you. Uh, this isn't yeah. a personal thing against you, bro. Hey, at all. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, Andre. Hey, Andre. Hey, 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 you got to let my, my bro finish, man. Andre, yeah. you got to let my bro finish, man. You yeah, Andre. Finish. Absolutely, you know. Andre, I'm going to just finish with this, Andre. Let JP finish. 
let JP finish. Yeah, I'm just saying you, it okay, almost man. made it seem with your with your language like if it was a debate with me and Chris when I actually partially agree with Chris, not fully. I already said what I said, and I never debated Chris on this topic. So you know, don't say, "Oh, I saw the discussion and the debate when you and JP." That was Rise and Chris. JP has nothing to do with this. That's all I'm saying. Continue on, Andre. JP, Andre, can I address him on that? That Jesus uh, never said that the demons would come back. I never said that, Chris. When did I say that? Did, didn't you say <laughs> I? Be, I be, didn't you say I believe Chris, once? I said, Chris, that I never said that deliverances has ceased. I never said that. No, you said. I thought you said you believe that once the demons out, it's out. It's over. I believe that if someone is oppressed, well, forget oppressed, because that word, you know. I believe that if someone has a demon in them and they get delivered, who the sun set free is free indeed. Okay. Right, right. All right. All right. That's not what Jesus right. taught. He taught that if the person returned to sin, that 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 demon would come back. No, 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 no. That's not what the that's not what is said. It said if the house is empty, then the demon would come back. But we believe that Jesus comes in the house, and once Jesus is in the house, the demons will not return. So that's why I don't believe. That we should cast out demons off of people in the streets who don't accept Christ. Because if yes, you cast so, a demon, let me finish, Chris. Because if you cast a demon off of somebody who's not Christian and the demons leave and there's no one in that house, and Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. So we know that if Jesus is standing at the door and knocking, you know, we have to let him in. And if we don't let him in and the house is empty, seven stronger come back. That is right, can, I, can I answer? Can I answer that? That's not biblically accurate because in the flesh, Dwells no good thing, and Jesus is a good thing. So you insinuate. Chris, I that said, uh, Chris, I said that the no good thing is a sinful nature. But Chris, uh, you want to let Andre finish because um, he was sharing his test. I mean, do you want you could finish addressing me? I'll make my point, and then we'll let Andre finish. Andre, all I was saying is don't misrepresent me because I never debated this topic. I didn't mention you in any way. I just you said I was. Wa I sure. just said I was watching your channel, man. That's it. Hey, can we get even, even even photos like you know, like the Brady bunch on here? Because it's only me on here now, and the, everyone else is talking. And people, well, I'm talking. done. I'm done talking. I'm done talking. No, I mean like the photos. Like I'm stuck. Like, is this how it's showing to the to the world? Yeah, I was. I was figured. I'd yeah, your highlight, man. man. You're the star you're of the show, bro. Come on. Don't like, you why like do that? you take the the oldest, baldest character in the room? Oh, come on, man. You're a handsome devil. Look at you. Come on, man. No, yeah. Okay, no, so, on, yeah hey, gonna, I wish, you know what? I hope I look. How old are you, by the way? 39. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. You look good for 39. All right. I'll tell you what. I'll do this. We'll put we'll put me up on the main. And then uh, actually, we'll just go back to the regular format. I just wanted to be. Sometimes when I have new people in and I don't know who they are, it's easier to have the avatar images small. So that that way, if they do something crazy like porn bombing or something, it's easy to remove or something. Because I've had some of those crazy trolls like that. So anyway. All right, Andre, did you want to finish uh, giving your yeah. testimony there and uh, finish your engagement? Somebody I appreciate said, you. Somebody said I got insecure. What is there to get insecure about? I don't get it. Like, what is there to get insecure about? Yeah, he wasn't. No, he thought there was a communication about something he had said. He thought it was a misrepresentation. It was being clarified. Don't overreact because then you look insecure trying to call out him, just trying to clarify what seemed to be a potential misrepresentation. Uh, don't be so trigger happy, folks, yeah, please. Yeah, and all I was saying is this. I never said that deliverances have ceased, but when you said you agree with Chris, and you said that the and you said that people say deliverance have ceased. If Chris believes that, and you say I was debating Chris, that means I believe. I never said that. I just said I was watching your channel and following. That's it. That's all I said. I just said I was watching. I just said I was watching. Okay, Andre, continue. Just know I don't believe that deliverances have ceased. Just that's all I'm saying. Continue, Andre. Yeah, you believe in right. Amen. Praise God. Okay, right. so uh, like Chris was uh, sharing, there's the spirit man. And then there's the flesh, and Satan is in the flesh. The flesh can never please God. The flesh is cursed. I'm 33. I got saved in 2015. I was uh, 26 or 27. But so for 27 years of my life, Satan owned me, and I've been working out my salvation, my healing, and my deliverance ever since I got saved. And I've been seeking deliverance, and I've been uh, practicing this with others also and like chris was saying there's layers and uh 
you got to do what in 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 Matthew seventeen twenty one it says some demons only come out but by prayer and fasting. So you could cast out lust, and your lust can go away, right? But do you believe lust is a demon? Under? Some absolutely. Yes, okay, there's so the lust uh, of the so flesh, you... there's the lust of the eyes. Oh, Andre, Red, yes, okay, hold on, uh, Andre, hold on. Let's 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 open it. Let's have some engagement. Too. No, I want to yeah. have some dialogue, Andre, because yeah, Andre, let's... You're, you're, yeah, uh, I just I'm curious, Andre, because you know, I I would say that I've struggled with lust, and you know, Chris has offered deliverance on me, right? You know, and that's private. Sorry if I mentioned that publicly, Chris, but whatever. And so me and Chris talk behind the scenes all the time. But with that said, for me, I don't, I never got the deliverance, but I found that when I don't put myself in situations where when I flee from lust, I don't lust. When I fast and I flee from it, I don't lust. So I never got a specific deliverance. But when I leave the situation in a practical sense and I'm fasting, when I leave it, I don't do it. So then what would you say that is? Did I cast a demon out? And then if no. I put myself in the situation, it comes back. Because I think it's my, my, I was created to reproduce, right? Mm -hmm. I was created to have sex. I was created with great babies. So mm -hmm. I will have an inclination to have sex with the opposite sex. It's who I am as a human being and a man. <clears throat> so how would you, would you say that my sexual inclination so, got what? a demon? Well, according to the Bible, what Jesus says you're doing is you're plucking out your eye that causes you to sin. You're cutting off the hand that causes you to sin, right? You're avoiding certain situations and environments, correct? Sure. Yeah, amen. So that's so what you're doing. So no, that's not, that's not a demon. That's not a okay, demon. Thank, but you. thank if, you. If, if, if somebody cannot stop thinking about pornographic images, mm -hmm. perverted thoughts, whatever, I, I, Right, right, right. Well, when you say thinking about it, are you talking about a temptation or entertaining? I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in, I'm going to get into depth about it. Um, I'm saying as a child, sometimes we go through traumatic events, and um, I did things when I was young that were sexually perverted that uh, that haunted me my whole life. I'm free now, hallelujah! But that deliverance. Uh, for the past three years has, has become more and more and more and more. Uh, it, it, it wasn't all removed the one time. Some of it was removed the first time. The second time it was more. The third time it was more. And now I, I am free from pornography. Amen. Like, wow. Like, <clears throat> yeah. That's so what, do, you what, do you struggle with a temptation ever? Uh, temptation comes for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I don't so, let I don't let a bird build a nest on top of my head anymore. Like temptation is like a bird that flies by, yeah. right? We, we always yeah. gonna deal with temptation, always. But I don't let that bird build a nest anymore. No, I, I hear head, I hear right? what you're saying, so, brother. So, yeah. I, mean, I have a question for Andre. So so Andre, so and, and for you too, Chris. Um, do you you do believe though the the uh, you said that uh, even the redeemed have demons still right that's is that your position yes so let me let me do this andre all due respect and beckles asking the question let me wrap this we don't have an issue, would, yeah, any, have don't have an issue with anything that you're saying we we agree with you where chris is coming from is he's saying that you right now have demons Even absolutely demons, right? we all have okay. stuff to work out in our life absolutely. no 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 you're not getting it no no that's you don't have it. a sin nature brother you don't have a sin nature you are possessed Demons are inside of you, within that the sin flesh. nature. So the, the, the flesh, flesh portion of you is yeah. demonic. It's yes, not just true. a hindrance of nature well, that you're born with him. in the world. Ask him if he believes he has them. He'll answer yeah. you. That's what I'm if saying. Is that I'm trying to get it. Andre, so do you believe? Do you hold to that position that Chris has? Then that that you actually? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. yeah, so, absolutely. so let me ask you this then. So let me ask you this then. So when you commit a sin, now that you are redeemed, because you said you you made you have a profession of faith. You believe that Jesus is the Christ. He died on the cross. He rose from the grave. And it's through him and his person and his work alone that a man is, is saved. Uh, so do you believe also that when you commit a sin after making that profession, that you are held accountable for the sin? Or are you going to say that it's the demon in you that ought to be held accountable for that sin? 
habitual sin and being conscious of sin, I'm accountable absolutely 100%. If I go okay. forward and do it, knowing that I shouldn't, I got to repent. Right? Right. You can never, no, repent. no deliverance minister on earth should be teaching that the people are not accountable for their sin. Okay, Amen. gotcha, gotcha. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So and I don't know, know of any that do. Okay, gotcha. I don't know of any that do. And I I go through other people's stuff to see what they're teaching for 10, 10 years, and I've never seen one deliverance minister that teaches so Chris, you the same, a demon. Chris, if someone gets demon-possessed where they lose control of their body and they shoot right. somebody, who's responsible? They are because the reason they're demon possessed is because they were repeatedly turned over by God over and over again. And they got so many demons in them that they became basically, basically a walking demon because through sinning and sinning and rebelling and rebelling, God turned them over to Satan over and over again. And Satan filled them up with his kingdom. But like like where where Andre told you, your lust is it might not be a demon I motion lust is always a demon and it's biblical because Jesus said you will do the lust of your father, the devil. Lust is not of God. Now, if you're looking at a woman and you have an attraction toward her, that's not that might not be lust. If you're looking at her curves and you're imagining yourself fornicating with her or raping her, having perverted sexual thoughts. Now you're in a demonic realm. Just looking at a woman and finding her beautiful and being attracted to woman is not demonic at its right. righteous right. core. But right. lust, lust is always demonic because the lust of the world and the lust of the flesh is not of the Father, but it is of the world. Who is the God of this world? Say no, one of you should be different to the other because you both look like you're uh, stupid here. <laughs> who, who us this is uh, our dear brother uh dr kenny rhodes uh kenny thank you for joining i wanted actually i'm glad you spoke up because i do want to give you priority of opportunity to contribute you might not have that long uh so if you want to ask a question or make a statement i'm sure you've been listening for a few minutes uh feel free and we'll let uh we'll let our delivery uh ministry proponents uh engage go ahead kenny wait wait did he say we're stupid because if he did I want to see his face, so when I put him in his place, we could all watch him. Well, that is his face. You see it on his avatar. No, no. Let's see his face on video. So Kenny, do you have Why, why, why do you need to see his face? He, kind of, he tends to do... Chris, I, I, Chris I, I enjoy, I enjoy when, he, when a guy's Chris, alive. come on. Guy. Chris, okay, I know it's a whole mm. thing you do with the faces. Mm. Let's just, you know... Uh, is that... Hey, I let you get away with it. It's your show, but, but why is guy over here... Needs a get away with it. Oh my goodness! All right, I don't get the face thing. But, uh... Yeah, I don't really. It's always the face thing. You know, the Muslims do that too. Like they get owned by Christian prince. They're like, show me your face. Show me your face. You're show me well, well, the face to me the person. <laughs> And you're just like, come on, dude. Like, yeah, the atheist, uh, the atheist is saying, okay, the atheist okay all right, Chris, things, Chris, yeah. just do me a favor, man. Can we cool it with the faces? Kenny's shown up on cam and he's shown his face, and now he's gone. Great, his internet now crapped out because we had to play gimmicks with the camera. Okay, well, rejoice. Right, somebody, somebody rejoice. Stupid. He'll be back. All right, Andre, if you yes. don't mind, bro, I appreciate where you're going with it, but I would like to keep this flowing. If you don't mind, we can circle back if you really have something you wanna you wanna add in. Uh, we have someone who's also been waiting in the back here for a while. Well, welcome, Jeffrey. How you doing tonight? You're muted, brother. You're, you're muted, bro. You gotta unmute yourself. There you go. There we go. There you go, man. Welcome to the show, man. Good to see you. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and uh, let us know if you have a question for anyone on the panel. Go right ahead. Uh, my name is Jeffrey. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay. Amen. Beautiful. Um, I just, I, I wanted to run a scripture by Chris. Um, just because I, I believe that you can cast out demons. I don't think everybody has a demon, but mm -hmm. it says um, in John, is it fourteen twelve? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, sorry, the light's bad. Uh, he will he do should, also. Yeah, exactly. He'll do greater works. 
Um, now I kind of forgot where I was going with it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, drawing a blank on it now. Um, well, that's okay, man. Yeah, yeah no, no, I, um, I, I, I had another question for him. Kind of, I like that scripture. I go to that one all the time. Um, but I just don't understand why you feel the the need to attack other people. No, I'm the one that's attacked. Don't get it twisted. Well, no, no, no. Okay, well, you've made like you've made your video. It's done. I, what video? I, what video? Or I thought that's what you were talking about. You made a video exposing Dore. Or whatever. Oh, no, Dore is getting the works. If well, no, know, actually, he made a whole channel, I think, is what yeah. he said, actually. Yeah. Dore is oh. getting the platinum <laughs> package because Dore <laughs> wants the platinum package. Hey, hey, Dore, Dore, guys, oh, Dore on, is not on, in the driver's seat. Let, let, let me finish, you. Chris. Do, do you hey, think that that hey, glorifies God? Real quick. Well, Vecco, huh? Vecco, hold, hold, hold on one sec, Vecco. Let's just let him finish, and I'll, I'll, you can chime in. Well, you, I, well, I just wanted to ask you. You have room for two more people to come into the room, right? Uh, I do. Dave's back there in Zion. I just wanted to be able to control it. If I just bring everyone in at once and there's ten talking heads, I got to try to keep some level of balance oh, okay. here because we got lots of opposite. I know, Dave. I know you're back there, bro. We'll work you in. And, we'll work and can, in. I see uh, Zion too. But I just want to let Jeffrey and Andre finish their thing, and then yeah. we're going to cycle forward. We're right. good. Just, just be patient, guys. I appreciate you. We're Real good. quick, Chris. What do you and mean in the driver's seat? What do you mean by that? I mean, when you're biblically illiterate and you're a novice and you're disrespecting someone that has the ability to break your doctrine down, beat you in debates, has more ministry experience, more ministry financing, every area of life. If you want to go mess with that guy repeatedly after you were warned, you're not in the driver's seat. I'm, oh, yeah. Does I, that I make sense? understand what you're saying. That makes sense? It kind of sounds like pride. To well, me, it's true. Like pride, and you're being boastful. Yeah, well, it's true. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, God, God requires a humble and contrite heart, so it's not uh, well, a persona that well, you want to. Humility, humility isn't stupidity. I know <clears throat> where I've been. The Bible pride says right. before the fall, Chris. <laughs> well, we're gonna see who's gonna. No, fall but I see then. what he's saying. If you're well, speaking the truth, that's about, what you're trying to. Yeah. Yeah. He's right. It's not, it's guys, not bragging right. if you're telling the truth. It's not guys, bragging if you're telling the truth about something. Guys, else. he's right. Pride comes before a fall, and we're going to see who's going to fall. He's absolutely right. Why, why is it your priority to see who falls? I, I mean, shouldn't you just That's be what I'm about getting get the truth out there? Why is it my priority? Yeah, it shouldn't you? Be, it shouldn't be your prerogative to see who falls. You, it should be your prerogative to tell the truth. It was my prerogative. Well, because the, the, your your language, your language here is, it, and, and even before we came to this room, you were saying it in JP's room. You had this persona of you as if uh, you wanted to destroy Smokey. You wanted to destroy no, anybody no, no. who no. had a, no, 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 Mm -hmm. And there's a prideful idiot with a big following telling mm -hmm. people I'm of Satan. And when I approached him in private, he disrespected me, told me I was his authority, and didn't treat me like you did, Mauler, and JP did, and Smokey <clears throat> did. I never tried to make Smokey look ridiculous. I have no problem with Smokey. I'm not going to make a YouTube channel about Smokey. No, we didn't say that. <laughs> no, we're just saying that uh, you're... Yeah, you wouldn't the be the first that, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of the language, I, you know, I mean, this is my first time talking to you too. And, and, uh, in JP's the room, language? you did kind of come off, uh, a, a the little, language. Little what focus. bad language did I use? I, I didn't say bad language. I'm just saying the language that you use regarding yourself, um, when you're being, he's talking through. about your dialectic. I'm yeah. testifying. Sometimes it what? feels, some, well, no, no, just real quick. It's okay. not my fault you guys don't have experience in the things. See, see, see right not, there, right there. See, right, right there. there. That's that what we're talking about. We're talking That's what we're talking about right there. Dialect. See, right then there. you're stupid. That's what, I'm see, right. there you go. See, you're doing it again. You're doing it again. 
See, that's what I'm talking about right there, Chris. See, instead of just humbling yourself and saying, well, you know, hey, I'm sorry that you feel this See, Chris, way about my you're acting well, like I'm you not sorry. What that. you're doing, no, 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 no. Instead of, no, what you're doing is, instead of just being humble and saying, well, I'm sorry you guys feel this way, but this is my position. No, what you're doing is, I'm not you're telling, sorry uh, you're telling people, way. you're telling I'm people not. that they're stupid because they don't agree with you. That's what you're doing, and that's a bad attitude. Well, guess what? They are. Let them prove there you go. There you go. I like to quote a verse there right now. Uh, Hosea 4 6. My people okay, perish okay, for a lack of knowledge. Guys, give me a chance. But there's also it's the no, 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 this, this Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. One oh, at a time. One I'm the one time. being attacked here, one and I'm the one being. No, no, you're, no, wait, wait, wait. It's mutual. Chris, Chris, hold on. You're playing the victim. You're playing the victim. It's mutual, bro. I was just asking a Guys. Guys, hold on. Give me one second, Chris. I will let you respond. Let's just let's take it one at a time here. Okay, please. Beckel, I, I get it. I understand your point. Uh, Jeffrey, ask your question. What, what is your question? Then we'll let Chris respond. You say whatever he wants. Go ahead. That's Veckel got it. This spot <laughs> okay, on. there it is. Okay, that, go ahead and respond. Exactly what, what, do you, what, what do you want to say okay. to the charge levied here about the loaded dialectic? Go ahead, Chris. All right, here's my response. Mm -hmm. It's not my fault these guys don't live the life that I've lived and they haven't experienced what I've experienced. I have a right mm -hmm. to say I've been in ministry way longer than Doré. I have a right to say Doré is not in the driver's seat because he's not. Now, until someone could get up here and prove that wrong, take a hike. I'm not some effeminate that cares if you like the way I talk. It's either a fact or it's a lie. You could come up here and prove it's a lie or shut up. All right. So can I chime in here? Because like, we, were, we were advancing the conversation. We came over here and we had a good conversation. And I think it was at one point when I was talking to you, Chris, and I was getting you to understand that the snapback of the, the one-liners that you were given. Just bro, right. you're right. Out. Bro, you're right. All right. But okay. That's, what, that's all I want to do. Bro, yeah. you're right. But guess what? I've been doing this too long to care. I get it. So that's what we wanted to hear today. We wanted to hear today that what you're saying okay. is I get you're saying that you're right, but sometimes okay. I get a little antsy. But, but, bro, I don't really want to hear it. I don't got time for it. Yeah, and but that's, bro, that's also you're antsy because you take my confidence as arrogance. Do you understand? No, 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 no,
Chris, dude, I'm you, just, dude, yeah. I've just been trying to maintain this. Seriously, I'm trying to keep this from from being non-functional. That's Chris, all. I, I yeah, Smokey, is, sm can I can I make a quick comment, real quick? Um, real quick, Veckel, because I want JP to <laughs> yeah, say yeah, his I'll, thing, I'll be and really I want to get I, Andre and Jeffrey finished yeah, so that yes, we can cycle you. them out yeah, and move on. Okay. Yeah, because I want to hear your questions also, Smokey. But uh, uh, the, the rhetoric that I'm, the, the the language that I'm hearing reminds me a lot of what evolutionists say to Christians or people who deny evolution. They often say, well, because you don't believe in evolution, it, you, you must be stupid because you haven't studied the science. You don't know the science. You're stupid. You don't understand it. I that's that's that. why. No, 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 no. I, I didn't say that you're saying that, but that's the way your language is kind of coming off when you have somebody who opposes your your position on this topic. I'm so it, I'm gonna play. Like, bro, bro, if you were doing this 10 years and no one ever even came close to refuting you, you'd be the same mm. one. God no, no, no. I'd be it. confident, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a, such a haughty type of. Uh, uh, I'm not wrinkle. haughty. I love you, man. It's just I'm from New Jersey, bro. I grew up in a Sicilian home. Hey, Jer we people from. I'm from New York City, so that that's no excuse. Are you a Sicilian? Did did you fight over meatballs? From okay, Veco. All right, this is all right. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, no, all right, topic. food, yeah, ahead, geography, yes, uh, beautiful. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, JP, you wanted to chime in with something, and then I want to get yeah. Andre and Chris. Jeffrey finished up and cycled out. Go well, ahead, so JP. Chris, I just wanted to ask you on record because you did give me a response off record, but people are probably going to be curious to know. But so I'm gonna ask you on record, and obviously, Chris, this is not any kind of trap or anything like that. I would never do that to you. I would at least hope that you uh, know me well enough uh, to not assume that I would. So my question to you is this. I understand that you have your issues with Dore. I have an enemy, Chris. That enemy being Oz. He's made two videos straight on me um, trying to expose me or whatever. Now, you know where I'm going with this, Chris. You made a video that kind of used Oz in a favorable light to push Dore down the toilet. No, and, I didn't. Well, well, your video was, was a screenshot of a, a conversation with Dore and Oz, and you basically made it seem like, well, Dore's an idiot for this reason, and Oz destroyed Dore. He did. But I, I, I disagree with this in the sense that even if Oz did destroy Dore or whatever... Did he? To give an atheist... Did he? Did he destroy Dore? I didn't see yeah. that debate. I didn't see that Answer debate. me, JP. Did he destroy him or not? Yeah. I think that if you watch the debate in its totality... How about the part I posted? In the no, no, no. Part well, posted, in the part that you posted, Dore didn't know the, 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 the uh, anecdotal, the word anecdotal. So, That's not the word. It's anecdotal. See, he's... Anecdotal. Yes, yes, correct. Anecdotal. Listen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everyone's got an accent. Relax, Chris. It's yeah, an accent. But so anyways, Chris... Come on, anyway. bro. Come on, chill, chill. Well, this is my point, Chris. Like, do you think you probably went a little too far posting that when it's Oz the atheist? And Oz hates you. Oz hates me. Oz hates Christians. Oz made fun of you in the response video. <laughs> Yeah, JP, did you see my stream defending you on that? Yes, I did watch. Yeah, watch. JP, JP, me and Oz aren't friends. I mean, uh, all I, I did he, was he made fun of you in the response video. I'm just saying, do you think that was wise? Yeah, and I told giving, you. Giving an, his, enemy, giving an enemy ammunition. He's Someone not gave, an, he's an, an enemy to me. This guy, this guy says that as soon as he sees me, he's going to punch me in the face. That's it. And anyway. <laughs> he did say that. That's true. I told you, JP. That? First of all, I don't think I went too far because I don't view Oz as an enemy. And I don't want Oz to think that Christians are as dumb as Dory looked that day. And okay. I, thought, I thought it was pathetic. But I, I'm not on Oz's side. But if Dory's going to piss me off and he wants an enemy and he wants to wage war with my ministry, he will find an enemy. You chose not to do that. I love and respect you. You've always been courteous. Mauler's been respectful. He's civilized. He talks like a human being. He doesn't, you know, act like a fool. And I like him and respect him. And even everyone else on this panel, I'm totally fine. But if you're going to poke me and poke me, and JP, you know Dore did it. Do you not? Do you not know we well, poked I, I mean, Don't, please really don't. About, Let's I not mean, get... I, J, JP has said he doesn't want to get dragged. No, uh, Chris, this was just Chris. solely uh, me, you, and Oz, and you gave me your response. So your response is... Let's move it forward. Chris, let's, let's move it forward. Let's move it forward. Please. Let, can let's I close just, out let's, on the Oz? Can I close out on that? Real quick, but let's let's move it forward, okay? Yeah, JP, 
hit Oz in that video made it clear he doesn't like any Christians. I told you. His partner called me out. He he thought I was. That's what I was call. saying. That's why I don't think it was wise. Yes. He called his you partner, out. His his partner saw me the way I exposed Dora. I didn't like my the way I am. Like you got some of you guys don't. And he was <laughs> triggered. His his flesh was triggered to call me out. So he called me out, and I told you set the debate up. And I told I sent him an email, and I said I'm gonna obliterate you and Oz. Get, let call JP. Oh, I never saw going. that email. Yeah, get it going. I, I'm going to send that guy into outer space. He's not smart enough. Go look at the comment section under my video. And he already lost the debate under the video. Uh, just just in, uh, not in defense, but here's what I will say. You, you Chris, you, you, you are placing, you're, you're giving me a reason to look through your eyes in terms of if I had a ministry, okay? Everything that you're talking about, and somebody came and attacked me, which again, I heard pieces, don't know the whole history, and I don't need to. Then I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I wouldn't react, probably angrily. But what I did appreciate is earlier you saw, you said that was wrong, meaning where you were going in those particular ways. And I think that's what happens. I think sometimes you get carried away and you may fire a shot and say, me, Veckel, or Smokey. And when you do that, point it out, you, you, take, you take some of the credibility away. Because right now, what you're telling me is, I think all of us would react that way. Somebody got up and smoked, especially another Christian, and said, Smokey, you know, your whole ministry is trash and this is why or whatever. And there were some pretty harsh words that he said. I'm pretty sure we'd all react the same way. So. Well, I get that all the time. <laughs> you mean, like, totally, you mean totally. like the way Dor you mean the way Dore said about my ministry? Well, that's exactly. what I remember. I remember two or three things that he said. I was like, okay, so you got sense. I asked him, but we didn't get. Well, too and much Chris, into it. you know, in the spur of the moment, I've said some not so flattering things about your ministry too. But I'm here trying to engage with you honestly and sincerely because I do want to get to know it. And I'm not yeah, trying to take me. it. You can well, ask dude, me. Well, dude. Well, well, you know, man. I, yeah, I could have. I'll admit that. That's true. But no, I mean, are, you can. Are, you, you can do it tonight in front of everybody. I'm well, that's what I'm saying. We are. And like I said, I've been taking notes. I'm I'm getting ready to go. I just want to give the audience the opportunity to have their engagement. Trust me, man. Yeah, absolutely. I got three or four questions I'd really like to pick your brain at. Absolutely. And I'm very interested to what you and, and Smokey, if you could, if, if Smokey, if you could host a debate with me, Chris, and Oz, and yourself, I don't mind doing it here. Uh, yeah, um, absolutely. That would be an interesting dynamic, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, any of that would be fine. I'd love that. Um, I get his partner, the partner I, too. Yeah, yeah, more, Bryce, Bryce. more Smokey, than happy to, uh, more than happy to moderate, um, on my channel. And I have been, uh, done some very good moderated debates in the past. So I wouldn't, well, I wanted happy you to be, to thank you. Uh, oh, that too. That's fine too. Uh, people, yeah, you got a lot of viewers. Right people right now. do like me as a debate partner, so that's fine as well. Okay, very good. Okay, Chris, let's move forward. I want to be able to wrap up with Jeffrey and Andre. Andre, please make your final statement or question, uh, and then we're going to cycle you out <clears> and uh, finish with Jeffrey and move on here. Okay, thanks. Uh, coming back to deliverance, uh, Jesus says it's kingdom against kingdom. And when we do deliverance on someone, we're going to be dealing against the kingdom of darkness. Jesus said hatred is the same as murder. If somebody committed murder, they have a murdering spirit. We can cast out murder. But beside murder, there's going to be uh, violence. There's going to be anger. There's going to be hatred. There's going to be bitterness and forgiveness. Demons come in packs of like wolves. They, they, they never stand alone. They always come in, in numbers. That's where their strength is. And uh, this is yeah. what Chris and I strongly believe is that when we, we do deliverance, it's a never ending thing. You have to continue cleansing your flesh. You need to work out your deliverance with fear and trembling before the Lord. And oh, I testify, not deliverance, yeah, brother. Not deliverance, oh, it's the same thing deliverance, he's not healing, he's not, he's not everything. To quote the Bible, he's just saying his belief, he wasn't claiming to quote the text. Well, not, no, Philippi yeah. not Philippians 2 12. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you got to work out, you got to work out your deliverance. You do, yeah. Uh, salvation well, is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about deliverance. We all need to work out. Some things in our life. Are we perfect? Have we received a glorified mind and body yet? No, we haven't. But we got all things that we need to work on. 
Absolutely. And if Every, anyone says agrees. if anyone says here no, you're full of pride. Everybody agrees with you. Nobody disagrees yeah. with you. No, the part that we is, disagree. The question is, what is it? Is it demons or is it sin nature okay. minus the demons? Okay. Okay. That's and, what Mauler Mauler's focusing there. If you want to have a conversation with me on that sin nature, is it the demons? We could do that anytime. If you you can just email me. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I honestly, I get, I get your position. I understand what I'm just saying, but you have to understand is that when we start to use that, the, the everybody goes, whoa, 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 Andre. You're not talking about the verse, but you use the same language as the verse. That's when right. you're going to get everybody right up like this. You know, you're exactly. going, no, no, no. It's not. Yeah. Well, here's but I get thing. what you're saying. Here's the thing. Understand. You know, uh, we have some have gifts of wisdom, knowledge, revelation, uh, yeah. and um, to every to each who covets the best gifts. Amen. It's Amen. like a field that is cultivated. We constantly, we want to cultivate in our gifts. And uh, this is what the Lord has shown me over the past two or three years, that uh, this is where the body is lacking so much. Unfortunately, I see it. There's a rise right now in the body of Christ, especially in evangelism and, evangelism and street preaching. But deliverance, many are lacking this knowledge. It is sad. It really I don't is. Th I don't. I don't think know. anybody disagrees. Um, I, I think I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I think I don't think anybody disagrees. What I was okay. talking. Um, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave it at that. I just want to say thanks thank for having you, me Andre. here. God bless sure. you guys. Grace and peace to all of you. All Appreciate right, man. it, Andre. Right. Have a great night. Thanks for being here. Okay, Jeffrey, are you still? Uh, are you still there? Jeffrey, so maybe, I thought, of, yeah, maybe just step. Can I give an analogy to what I think is happening here? Uh, uh, Jeffrey, uh, uh, ahead, uh, Andre, thank you for being a part of the show. Have a great night, man. Appreciate it. Go ahead, uh, no. Jeffrey. Go ahead, Jeff. I'd like you to have your final statement or question. Go ahead. That's uh, that's on you. Um, I'm a guy that jumps topics sometimes. Um, <laughs> so I just have a kind of a question for everybody. And it's kind of a... It's, I bro, guess Doc. Please don't oh. come up with this flat Earth stuff, bro. Are you gonna pull that? No, I'm not. Flat Earth? No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not coming with that question, but I, right. I do still think it's flat. But, um, are you pre-trib or post-trib rapture, and why? Oh, Just me? across the board. I'm, I'm pre-trib. Pre I'm pre-wrath. I'm neither post or pre. I'm pre wrath. You know that position? Yeah. yeah. But I don't so think that's Jeff what does. I am. That's what I am. I am pre so post trip, pre wrath. Really random. Post trip, pre wrath. But before the last vial is poured out, that's when you think that you're you're getting taken out of here, Chris. Right? I, I, yeah, before God pours out, I don't, I'd have to look into the Bible to see about the question you're asking me about the last vial. It's the last vial. Yeah. If, well, if that's if that's when the wrath is coming, that's when right before God's okay. wrath comes. Right. Right. Okay. I, I, your, I guess I, I believe I believe on this on, on, on the same I guess along the same lines. I believe it's at the very end, the end of time, because is the Lord says endure until the end. People like to say endure until you die. The end of your death when you die. Yes, I believe that. But I also mean. I think he was very literal when he said the end. Because Bro, that, that's not that's not a good argument because there yeah, are I know. people that are going to be there that have to endure to the end, right? There are right. people who aren't saved, who will be saved, who are going to have to endure to the end. So I am pre-trip because I don't see the church mentioned anywhere in the book of Revelation during that seven-year period. They're just simply not mentioned. They're, they're mentioned, the beginning churches are mentioned, and then coincidentally... The church isn't mentioned in, in, in the middle of the seven years. Uh, we're not appointed to wrath, and there's going to be a lot of wrath to eat during that time period. We're talking islands disappearing, islands moving. Right. Wrath so there, I personally but not do not believe. But doesn't, so isn't Jesus coming back to get his bride, right? I believe that Jesus will rapture so us. So when, when does Jesus come back? What do you mean when Jesus comes back? Jesus comes back after the after the um So you're pre-trib, right? Right? You're pre-trib, right? Is that what you're I'm saying, JP? I'm okay. pre-trib. So is he saying it comes back before I believe Jesus lands on this earth after the seven years. So what do you believe, Jeff? I believe that he, we get raptured up. 
And then after the seven years, Jesus comes and he reigns in the All millennium right. reign for a thousand you're, years. You're, you're pre. What are you, Jeff? I'm post. Okay, so you're post. And honestly, I, I, that's assuming your, your interpretation of Revelation? I don't know. I mean, I... I that's recently, just a really odd uh, question. The only, can, can, can I explain? Can I explain just... Briefly. Let's let's try to let's try to try to, wrap, try to wrap it up, up. in a couple I'll minutes here, Jeffrey. Please, yeah, the, well, that was really random. But go ahead. Yeah. I told you, I, hey. Yeah, but that was up. really random. It's that open mic, right? right? Open mic. I asked. Yeah, we, we, don't wanna, say, we don't want to go into a whole eschatology thing tonight. Anyway, right. try, let's let's, yeah, let's just make a quick man. Make your point there, Jeffrey. Go ahead. All right. So the reason that I believe it's post, as I've already said, he says endure until the end. But also continue. I already yeah. addressed that, but continue. And you left the end. I already addressed it. You're using address to the end. I, I destroyed that argument, bro. You you still believe that's why we're gonna go through the seven years after I destroyed that argument, bro? Endorse you can't end, like, like, like the you Well, JP, any well, JP, just let quick. him. I mean, if you've already destroyed it, just let him pitch it and right, then go you can ahead, destroy man. it again. Go, then go you can destroy it Jeffrey, again. I apologize this, for my, this is his I, final word. This is his okay, final word. And just make make it count, Jeff. Go ahead. Take it. Yeah, I, I, um, I do apologize sincerely. Uh, no, you're fine. What? No, it's okay, man. Hey, hey, you know what? We all we all get excitable in those moments. I hear someone obfuscating or misrepresenting or doing something that's been repeated. Hey, man, I get there too. No judgment. You're fine, man. I just, just, uh, uh, yeah, no, I want to hear both of your takes on it. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm, uh, done. Jeffrey. I'm done. Jeffrey, you got the last word. Well, you, you like to break people's trains of thought. <laughs> Jeffrey, you said that you believe that we'll go through the tribulation because we will have to endure to the end. Very good. Yes. Um, just elaborate on that. What's your justification? Biblical, philosophical. Yeah. That, what is the end? Yo, yo, yo. Uh, end uh, Come on. Let me address something. Sure. Shame, yeah, go ahead. All due respect. You're on my channel. You're from Chris Lasala's channel. When Chris debated me, you came over to my channel. You've been very sweet. You've been very sweet. But please don't say I believe in pre-trip because I'm scared. Because I'm hitting the streets <laughs> at 12, 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, where there's crackheads that could shoot me in the head. <laughs> At any moment, so why are you scared, JP? I'm, are you scared? I'm not even pre trip because I'm scared. That's very offensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, to say up. that to a street preacher willing to stand yeah, out during the yeah, ride yeah. and tell a bunch of homosexuals just to repent, come on, he man. ain't scared. I, you know what, JP? Is God, JP is bold, and Jeff, I don't think anyone could say he isn't. That's, Jeff, let that's me... not something just anyone could do. No, but that's Jeff. a common misconception. You believe in pre trip Man, you had to put that flat Calvinist, really. You like that? Hey, check you're it. Cal right. You're a Calvinist. You're a tulip no. too. No, no, he's making. He's making. No, because we always talk about flat Earth. But Jeff, let me tell you something. Can just research this. I don't approve everything he says. I don't prove he's orthodox either. So I'm not talking about his all his doctrine. But just look at the way Hank Hanegraaff looks at the book of Revelation, the end times. It might be interesting to you. Okay. Because I think you only have one perspective. And I know you're talking about tribulation, pre post, whatever, but everything from all the millennials position. Okay. Look at it and just research it. Because in the end, that's not an issue that's going to save us or we're going to lose. But it's interesting. Right. But hear that perspective because I don't think you've heard. There's probably three really prominent ones, and it's pretty convincing. So look look into it, brother, because yeah. I think you'll eat it up like you ate a flat earth. I, I got um I, I I I got the point that I was trying to make. Cool. Um, All right. So what I was Jeff trying to make on on it being post trip, and I'll try to wrap it up quick. Just real I, quick, Jeff, because we got to move forward. We got to move forward here. I I think that it's post trip because it's like preparing for something like let's say you're i don't know like a prepper or whatever you're preparing for the disaster and you think that something is going to happen and it doesn't happen so your pastor has been telling you oh we're going to get taken out of here we're going to get taken out of here we're going to get taken out of here at that moment it doesn't happen then what happens to the people you lied to us. You lied to us. It's not true. Now we have to go through this. So in my head, I prepare. I want to prepare for the worst. Try to prepare my mind, my heart. Yeah. My soul, well, you're basically saying Jeff, Jeff is you're brave, and JP he's he's a coward because he JP's wants to get out here. JP's got quick. a lot of explaining. To well, that's him. the problem. Is it? <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I
Not they're gonna be Jeff, to you, your JP. Defense, they're sorry. gonna be like, you told us we would be out of here. We followed no, 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 you no, this no. Wait, wait, wait. If, if I may, if I may, uh, to Jeff's. No, uh, I get, I get Jeff's Jeff, point. Can... I do get your point, brother. I'm not trying to make fun. Yeah, yeah, but but let me let me just piggyback off of that real quick. And I know uh, Smokey wanted to get on to something else, but I just yeah, want to because I do veer more towards the post trip myself. Uh, but I'm not prepared to have a debate on it, to be honest with you. So, uh, but I will say this: I think that the what Jeff is saying is spot on because uh, we when Jesus says, and I think it's in John 17 when he's talking to the disciples before things start going down, right? He says, "I tell you these things ahead of time so that you are prepared, so that you are not offended." And I think that's the same way with all these with, with regards to the teaching of the post trip so that we are made aware of these things uh, before they happen uh, so that the, by the time they do come to us, our faith uh, is not uh, disturbed. We're not shaken in our faith, so on and so forth. Um, and I want to go into a whole other tangent on this. Here's, here's why I'm going to push back on that. Right. And I hear you. And that's a very beautiful explanation. And I'm going to just finish off by saying this. And, 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 and this is my last statement. My last statement is this. Yeah. Um, the Bible says that he's coming when there are rumors of war and, ex and, and, and he gives a big, big thing. There, when there's rumors of war, etc. There are rumors of war now. There are no, things says, AP, now. AP. Well, hold on, Chris. No, hold on. Hold on, Chris. Hold on. Hold on. Just, no, just, but that's, just... it says the end is not yet when there's war. Okay. Let, again, I, Chris, I know, man. I don't, I'll tell you what. You guys want to have an eschatology. I took debate. us to <laughs> okay, have a Sorry, guys. Thanks, because, Jeff. Hey, you know Thank what? Thank you, Jeff. JP and Chris Sasala, eschatology debate would be very interesting, but let's not it's, do it's it right not, now. It doesn't need to be a debate. Just open the Bible and look at what it let, says. Okay. <laughs> Chris, don't <laughs> <laughs> he did it again. That's the Chris move. He did right it there. again. See, did well, it bro, Christmas. open the Bible. <laughs> Chris, not, okay, all right. All right. No, we, if we open okay. the Bible, I'm, I'm looking at it right here. But it, if Jeff, you really, open the Bible, Jeff, we're going to wish you a good that night, it word man. For word uh, says, for wars, again. rumors of wars, God bless and it's not you. yet. No, you're talking. You're. I. I have an even a totally guys, different view than that. Guys, so I agree with you, but right. it's not just that slam door right in his face. It's just his interpretation. Again, we understand that one. I okay, get what you're saying. Right. I get what it well, says, guys, Chris, but I got another on. view let's on it. Let's move on. Uh, Jeff, thank you for taking the time. Have a good night. God bless you, sir. Take care. God Appreciate bless you. you. Thank you. All right. Okay, beautiful. All right, we got a couple more people. We got my buddy Dave from the news unit. Welcome, Dave. Uh, good to see you. And we got someone else uh, by the name of Zion Wright. Uh, Zion, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. Zion, welcome to the show. Go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, let us know if you have a question for the panel. Uh, hey, I'm Zion Wright. I don't exactly like to associate myself with denomination as I believe Christ did away with that. Uh, I do have, um, it's kind of like a, a change of topic, topic question. Um, first, I'd like to open up with, um, are there any prophet like what like are there any prophets in here or like such like you know um have any of y'all had like uh dreams or anything of such i um, would i would not claim prophet status in any stretch of the imagination no no not at all may i so, ask um why is that why aren't there prophets all right yeah why would you believe that because personally I, well, because I believe the canon of Scripture is closed, and the Bible says that in past times he's spoken through his prophets, but in these latter times he's spoken through his son, and his son appointed his apostles who are the foundation of the church, and at the point of their death the canon of Scripture is closed, which means if a prophet was, was being delivered a word in this present tense day, and as a prophet, that means they would be receiving Scripture. Which means that the canon was... of scripture would not be closed. So I would, I would have a hard time with someone being able to claim, you know, biblical prophet status these days. Because oh. of course, prophets transcribed and wrote down scripture as inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. But based on what you're saying, Zion, are you getting at that there's no prophets in this room? Hence, you're a prophet, or there should be prophets in this room? Let's get down to no. the nitty, brother. What, what I'm saying? saying is, um. Personally, I have had dreams that had come to fruition. Oh, like, well, have well, seen the things. The last stuff. days, they will dream dreams, bro. Yeah, so hallelujah. Yeah, and, and, and by the way, uh, Zion, that's why I meant by. Okay, you Zion, know. you can have the gift of prophecy. Yeah. It does not mean you are a prophet. This okay, is, so I get what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. 
Right. So, so I, it, there's no reason for us to necessarily doubt your sincerity or even that you're telling the truth. Certainly, I'm sure you experienced something. I have no reason to doubt you. But don't overreach with what that might be implying. Perhaps God is just giving you that gift for a specific reason at a specific time to reach a specific person. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have some sort of station of profit. That's what I would say, if that helps. Uh, I okay, I can understand that disposition, however, I like still currently do, and you know, so you're um, saying that you're a prophet, is that what you're saying? I don't know how I'd phrase it, but I do know that I do have that gift of prophecy. All Smokey's like, saying is you do have that gift, don't use the word, oh, no, no, first prophet, though, Lucas, but but here's why yeah. though, because there's no prophet in the Bible that went around saying they were prophet, they in fact were dragged. Most that's why them. I don't. Yeah, yeah we're, that's why. We're that's why I was asking different. that question. Do you have a prophecy to give one of us? Yeah, I was gonna say. Is that um, relevant to us? That was one of the, one of the first questions. Well, one of the first things I wanted to speak on. Um, recently, I've been getting dreams about um, kings falling. And oh, what? Then um, kings falling, or you know, like um, nations falling apart. Um, and what's going to be coming to America? Do you so, have some specifically that you were shown? Because yeah, kingdoms have yes, fallen throughout um, history. Yeah, but recently, you know, what happened with Myanmar, the word of God says, you know, a kingdom, it says a king that does not rule with wisdom will fall. It says a kingdom that is not established by wisdom will fall. And we um, agree with that. Yeah. Myanmar, if you pay attention to Myanmar, Haiti, um, and a few other places recently, Afghanistan as well, <laughs> the king, you know, the, the kings have fallen. Kings are being like, it's happening, you know, like, Living yeah. on a day to day, on like you know, like, I'm not gonna say day to day as a stretch, but it's happening, you know. Um, but your specific prophecy, specifically, that you're telling King, King's Fall, it's in regards to America, no, no, it's in regards to America. Um, I had you know, and you can take my word for it and hold on to it, you can pray about it. I yeah. personally, you know, but what I saw was <laughs> an assassination of the pregnancy, which led to martial law in America. Um, well, technically, we're under martial law right now, but what you're saying is if you're specifically saying that Joe Biden is going to get assassinated? I don't think it's going to be Joe Biden. Oh, okay. All right. I, well, I, so. um, what happened in the dream, you know, the word of God says in Isaiah chapter 3, verse, I think it's, I believe it's 10 to 12. It speaks about how when the woman leads, they lead the men to error. This is more of a personal belief as opposed to my, um, as opposed to the prophecy I was given, but it aligns to the script to all. Um, yes. You know, if Joe Biden doesn't think Kamala peace, Harris is going to be assassinated? No. What I'm saying is I believe if she leads, it's the fulfillment of scripture, which, which is going to lead to the downfall of the kingdom, which will yeah. be, um, well, I believe. We that, already know that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, but bro, that's what I'm saying. The thing about all this is how does it affect anyone's life? And how do you know that the dreams you're seeing aren't just for you? And not for anybody, and not for you to tell everybody. Uh, that's that's why I'm a praying that's man. A I haven't told good. anybody before I even got invited to show. The first thing I do was pray. I pray. The that's word of God says, life. you know, you have to be prudent. Well, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you, Zion. You're not saying anything I don't know. Everybody knows that if Kamala Harris wins the presidency, this country's gonna fall apart. Well, I, I, well, I would go even further, JP. We all agree in this room we're falling apart. That it's shared by God's grace that we're we're even still a country at this yeah, point. So right? I, I guess <laughs> Amen to that, man. That's yeah, true. Hey, brothers, could y'all let me finish so I can get to the point? No, yeah, but I'll you know. say this because we, we have to address Chris here. Smokey has questions, and we, we you know, your your prophecy is Got yeah, I get this towards because I want to be able to finish up my thing with Chris too. And he's been yeah, really yeah, yeah. by the way, Chris, I really appreciate you actually being yeah, so generous Thanks, with your Chris. time and hanging out, man. Seriously. It, it really I'd good. like to I'd like to find out more about these prophecies sometime. Dave, yeah, like, no, I promise bro. Sure. No, I mean on my For channel. Sure. If this guy wants to give me I'll write them down, I'll write a book about them. See if they come to pass. Yeah, I know. One of them came to pass in two years, I promised that to my mother. I told well, you know. Okay, well let's let him finish his prophecy and then we'll we'll yeah. uh figure that out we can have a little response to each, to that each of us go, okay go, I'm, go I'm gonna i'm gonna shorten it because it's a it's a long prophecy i'm gonna shorten it okay you know, go ahead. basically the taliban got into this country that was shown to me in a dream before it even happened i believe that there's going to be an uprising and they're going to assassinate one of the presidents i believe i personally believe it's gonna be andrew yang because in the dream it was an alien who was running for president and doing you know um there was inflation going on and he was offering stimulus checks as um 
the president. Andrew Yang is going to be the but president. Hold on, let's just let him. That's out. what I believe because he's running, but I know it's going to be a non-American because it was shown as an alien. Bro, Andrew Yang um, couldn't even been mayor, bro. What do you mean alien? You mean not uh, a person not Basically, born in this country? Not, not of American. Alien? Not of American. Bro, you know, bro listen. Um, you said Andrew Yang. Oh, I thought you meant somebody. Yeah. I said that's my belief true. because he was running. And he was bro, Andrew Yang couldn't even his, his giving is interpretation of it. Exactly. He's from yeah. America. Thank, thank you, Smokey. Go, go ahead. Go keep ahead. going. Keep, um, keep going. Go ahead. And, you know, God revealed to me that, you know, first and foremost, this is not a nation. Um, There's a nation beyond this, and he's going to be moving his children out before martial law strikes. There's going to be a lot of calamity that's going to be coming to America. He said, pay attention to Myanmar. Look what's happening in Myanmar. Look what's happening in Haiti. He even showed me the floods before they, the floods have been hitting. There was um small you know, there was huge hurricanes the week after I got across the net and I was talking to my wife about it. That whole week after there were hurricanes hitting and floods. There was massive floods. I believe it was in what was it Missouri or what was it? It was it was basically I believe it was um somewhere around there. There was a lot of flooding. A lot of people were dying. Um all that stuff I had dreams about before it happened. And that's and did why you I'm tell like, tell anyone, you, warn anyone. I told my wife, I spoke to my mom. I you know, I am still learning. I'm still building my own ministry as of now. I don't have that. Well, well, you know. well puzzling thing about this, if I may, real quick, if this of course. is a, a form of uh, prophethood, um, why would God give it the prophet, the prophecy, to someone who's incapable of giving it to the people that need it? Because I'm like, actually like, working on. Well, personally, I know I'm working on building a ministry team. I'm already getting situated. I'm 22. I'm married. I have my kids right now. I'm getting stuff situated as of now. Okay, but, um, well, hold on. I know. Hold, this, hold on. Here's here's why I'm skeptical. Because number one, I don't think you have any evidence of any of this. I don't think you have a YouTube. I have a document. I write everything down on my notes. I have books. Yeah. Dude, dude, okay. Uh, hold on. Man. Listen. Of, just just okay. just just listen to what I'm saying. Okay. Um, there's there's nuances about what you're print presenting that has red flags flying up for me in lots of areas. Um, and one of the things that is very unique about all Old Testament prophets in a real thematic way, part of why I also reject Ellen White as a true prophetess who founded the, uh, the SDA church, um, is that uh, her prophecies were worthless. Um, they were useless to literally <clears throat> everyone including the people inside the church and only way after the events are they attempting to reach into minutia and vaguety to attempt to verify them now you're presenting a perspective saying that you've been given visions of floods in faraway places and recognizing them as these places and then these floods occur which means that god is giving a prophecy to someone um, about an event to occurring um, who has no ability to actually warn the people who will be affected by it and here's one of the things, just so you know, and I recognize you guys uh, pretty pretty clearly when there's kind of this attachment to sensationalism, is you avoid the most important part of a prophecy, which is not the statement of future tense things about to occur, but what is expected on the populace um, in order for these things not to occur, which is generally judgment of God. Um, now, in no part of your prophecy, and I would probably bet in most instances that you've ever presented this to anyone, uh, you probably haven't presented that component of what you believe the path is. You just present this in a fatalistic type of perspective that this is just the path we're locked into. And I am a big gifted prophet that's going to tell you how nightmarish it's going to get. It's basically just a random form of sensational fear porn. Uh, so, uh, I am aware of these type of antics. So I'll tell you what, if you happen to indeed start a ministry and you get a dream and a vision, do us all a favor. Don't sit on it. Uh, if God is giving you a vision of a faraway place, it's kind of cruel of him to give it to you and no one else when you have no power to deliver the warning to the people who it could value and affect and actually help. It actually makes it seem like you're serving actually a sadistic God who's giving warnings to people where it's basically worthless to the people that the warning is given to because you're being given a vision of a faraway land with no contact to the people and no ability to affect them. And oh, wow, you told your wife and your mother. Awesome. Great. And that affected them how? Like, I, you know, this is this is what I'm talking about. Like, in order for to claim this type of position, you are there's lots of things that just aren't quite fitting 
you know, it's partially a straw man theory kind of in a, in okay. a way. Well, dude, I'll because, tell you what. I don't well, want to. Let, let me. Here's the thing. Can, man. May I, you know. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I will let you respond. But but here's where I'm going to leave it. And and I just I want to move forward with this. But I'm, I'm going to let you say one last thing. But I'm going to be done with this. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, you have a challenge. OK. Next time you have a vision, make a video. Put it on the record. Say, yep. uh, God gave me a vision. God gave me a prophecy. This is going to happen. Put it on your YouTube channel and then show it to us. Yep. And you know what? If it matches up, hey, man, I'll be I'll be pretty much uh, sold on your side at that point. Uh, remember, Smokey's coming that's, at this. That's not no, 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 no. That's not Zion. Zion, 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 real quick. Zion, Zion real quick. He's, oh. in, Zion, he's coming at you. He's not coming out as a challenge. He's coming at you and prove it as a testimony. No, no, if I know. God that's what I said. Is, testify with it. And right. that's why I'm sharing this with you. So now if it comes to pass, well, when it comes to pass, I know it will, because God also, I know I'm going to be moving in a few years. God showed me that as well in the dream. I'm going to be going to Japan. And I bet you in three years, three, four years, five years, I'll be in Japan because there's work out there as well that he showed me specifically I'll be doing. You know, uh, in these days, the word of God, what God has shared with me when I was in Ohio, and it's come to pass as one. It's in regards to my life, or most of it. Most of us you got to start been, recording this stuff, brother. You're talking about too many things that have come to pass. You got to start recording. No, no, no. This, this part well, alone. Right now, like, you got to move on, buddy. So, behold the prophet. It, behold. Is that is that really just on? Um, yeah, Zion, let me tell you something. Still trying to, attempting to the speak. Zion, Here's the thing. I'm going to move No, seriously. Here, God, wait, let me let me just respond and then, you know, go ahead and. Zion, you know, I know I, I, I'll tell you what. I'd, I'd go so far as to mock Zion. your God, Zion. You know that? I blaspheme your God straight up. Zion, okay, I know you're, when I know you get judged for that, that's going to be on you. Zion, Zion, um, I know Well, then why don't you prophesy about me? Do it. I dare you. I want to see if I'm it not comes to I'm not I going to prophesy. I fucking blaspheme your not, God, your spirit, and your Jesus, works. all three of them. Hey, 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 well, that's, that's hey. great for you. That's great for you, bro. I hope okay, that, that Zion, works on the end. Then he's going to the Lord, not me. Okay, dude, hold on. Zion, let me tell you something. Let me tell you. I know you're a false prophet. Okay, I know you are. And and I know I know you're trying to go down a path of sensationalism and self promotion for this. Okay. I, no no would, no no no. I'm not. You I would, promise you. you I'm not. Hold I on. Let me tell you. Not. No. Hold on. Hold. Let I me have... explain something to you. Let me explain something to you. This is a very important principle that is th that is thematic all throughout the deliverance of prophecies by prophets all throughout Scripture. Is there is always a layered tense to them. There's always something that's intended to come to fruition in the short term to verify the prophet and then something in the long term that they know they can count on because the prophet was verified okay you can't just come into a room and proclaim position a prophet with having absolutely zero demonstration you can't other than just your own personal testimony and something you told your family it's not going to work that's not that's do, understandable do, I was, okay. that's exactly okay, what then I was do us a favor i'll tell you what do us a favor because i, I guarantee you if you really are a prophet god's going to empower you to be able to do this because he's going to want you to be believed and i'll be happy to highlight you Go next time Absolutely. you get a prophecy, make a video. Uh, when it comes true and has its fruition, come back, man. I'll give you a whole stream and we'll talk about it. Okay, I promise you. All right. Okay, fair enough. He will. Uh, okay. He uh, will. He, he's he's not lying to you. I'm no, not. I know. Fair enough. And I, you know, and you know what? It'll, it'll never happen. Away. I'm not. I can tell. I'm gonna prophesy right listen. now that it'll never happen. <laughs> no, seriously. Ojo said, do not take it the wrong way. I'm not doing. You know, I have no intention of the. At the end of the day, everything, all the glory goes to God. At the end of the day, I'm not. I'm nobody. At the end of the day, I don't know, man. It, so you know, this was not a self promotion that. tactic. I don't even have a channel. I don't have anything as such. That's the problem. That's the problem. But that's because, because you know I'm no, getting no, no, sick. No, 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 you know no, what happened? No, no, I can give no, you my no, testimony. Dude, so you can understand stop, what happened. Stop. 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 That this is not the way a prophet would be delivered. Let me tell you something. Uh, Christ was even, uh, God was even very clear when he delivered uh, the prophecy through Ezekiel that the blood was going to be on his hands if he did not go and share that message. Now, you're claiming to receive message that you have not followed through to deliver to the people that it would affect. You might be finding yourself under condemnation if you really stick to this crap, dude. You need to be careful. Okay, I'm serious. Okay, yeah, you're playing with bro. fire here, dude. That's you're, also hold unjust. On. you're playing with fire here, dude. That's also unjust. If you, failed, if you failed to deliver the warning and the prophecy to the person that you were supposed mm -hmm. to deliver it to, to their benefit, their blood is on your hands by example. Through Think about people. Jeremiah. You want to be real careful. That's right. Okay? Yeah. Zion, 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 no, listen. Zion, Zion, please, guys. Can I just listen real quick? Yeah. Hey, guys. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick, Zion. Real quick, Zion. 
You, me, you said the other red flag. Hold on, one at on. a time. One at a time. I, I, wanted to, I, wanted to, I wanted to bring up an example. Please allow me to speak real, real Beckle, quick. Please wait. That's exactly please why wait. I, when I get specific prophecy, like when I got the specific prophecy about my mom, I warned her. It was about, and I, I, I'm not going to get into detail. I'm, I'm not talking about that, that one. Okay, so but that's what I'm saying. The other one, one I didn't stop, have stop, exact stop. specifics. Dude, stop or I'll so just how much? I'm trying to be respectful. Just stop. Okay, respect me. Stop. Okay, we're done. Okay, Mahler, go ahead. Say your thing. No, I was just going to say the piece, the red flag. It was a perfect point, Smokey. The red flag to me is, brothers, uh, uh, prophets don't come and talk about teams and starting ministries. If they do, it's another kind of prophethood that none of us on this channel are fans of. But we know we're talking about you know these these uh, money preachers so i'm not saying that's what you is but i already hear the language coming out you're talking about teams and squads and ministry starting up that's not what prophets do brother not a, I mean, yes and no, the word ministry means to serve that's okay what I mean it does it does but so i want serve you to God, give a scriptural example God. outside that's of close I mean. disciples outside of close disciples around john outside of jeremiah or those that wrote in the scribe and helped him in his ministry they weren't talking the way you were talking, brother. That's all I'm telling tell you. You're starting to sound like other prophets we know on TV. Amen. We don't want that's, you to follow that. Un, no, no, that's understandable. That's exactly what I wanted to, you know. Um, one, I know there's still so much for me to learn. No, no, no. For, for, God foremost, bless you, brother. So, that's all I got to say. God bless okay. you, man. That's what, that goal, give your uh, analogy. Or Una, I wanted to, or, Una, are you an atheist by chance? Wait, wait, wait. wait. I, just wanted, I just wanted to uh, give a biblical uh, uh, analogy real quick. Uh, Actually, it's not. It's it's actually in the Bible, First Kings thirteen, where it talks about that man of God that was tricked into uh, disobeying the Lord, uh, after being told by <laughs> another prophet who lied to him about an angel, telling him to tell the man of God to go back with him to his home to eat and drink. So the older prophet was then given a revelation from the Lord of what would happen to the man of God for disobeying the Lord, that he would not be buried with his father. So later, that man of God was killed by a lion while he was on a donkey and ironically the lion never touched the donkey but that's neither here nor there the point of the matter is that we we, we see that this man of god um was killed for directly disobeying god you know and uh you know it was a prophet it was a prophet actually that died he was killed this is in first kings 13. Yeah, the summary of the scripture. warning from the brothers zion the summary warning for the brothers is don't don't be self-deceived Really search this out and don't don't do this lightly. Don't no, do this know, lightly. Start recording it on the channel and start okay. sharing it, brother, because you're the first one that JP's hey, gonna. You're the first one. Honestly, one. That, does does, does Zion even do video? Does Zion even have a video? That's why I was asking questions about how should I approach that if that is the case, and instead I'm Absolutely. not bashed by what, fellow what brothers who are supposed to. What you know, I just said, what I just said is how you approach it. If you get a warning, then you make a video. You make it as public as you can. You don't sit that's, there and just throw your family. And, that's and, what then, I was and then, things. and then you also have evidence for all of us yeah. to help us verify of you that the thing that you're claiming is true. Okay. Hey, can, I, can I can I watch one of your videos, out. Zion? Do you have a video now? Do you have any recent videos? I do not. I used to. I journal. I journaled it. I didn't know. You know. I'm, Why don't you do videos? You don't need to haze the kid. You don't need to haze the kid. I, yeah, yeah. We're good. Like, like, let's, let's, let's. Let's. Okay, guys. Can I let's, say something to this young man, please? Yeah, go for it. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. All right, buddy. Two Timothy four five says you have to prove your ministry. Take the time to you go. You probably don't even know where it is. I actually do. And you see, but, the way you're treating on, me is completely undone. Hold bro. on. Let Chris finish. Let, Chris finish. Let, me, let me just hold finish because I'm trying to help you out here. You may have the calling to give prophecies in the future. No one here knows. You can't listen yeah, to the, the demons that are trying to discourage you, your walk. No, you no. can't listen to people that are puffing you up, telling you you're a prophet. Right, you right. need to take these dreams and sit on them. Hold your tongue. Until you're one hundred percent sure it's God, because Satan will get you. If you Amen. have the urge to be a prophet, and the devil knows that's your desire, he's going to get in there. You have to sit back, let God give you these dreams. If God is the one giving them to you, see what comes of them. Make sure you're really hearing the Lord, because if you go out and you put these on video and they're wrong, you're done. Because somebody Amen. like is going to get a hold of them, or someone like these guys below. And they're going to destroy you as a false prophet if you are one. No one mm -hmm. here knows if you are one or not. I'm for right. you. I'm not against you. I pray to Jesus Christ I, that you are one. I Chris. pray to Jesus that he uses you. Chris. And I hope he blesses you. The good thing is he's OSAP. Even if he's a, a false prophet, he's still going to heaven.
Yeah, Chris, hold on. I do not <laughs> believe that. The word of God is clear. Hebrews 10 verse 26 is very clear. Wait a minute. Right. Wait a minute. Chris, do you, do you believe that there is anything wrong with me demanding of him the same test of true prophethood as what was presented to the Old Testament prophets? Am I somehow morally wrong? I didn't say, say that. Okay, just checking. All right, enough. just checking. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Okay, Zion, we're going to move on. Uh, we have one more person in the back, and then I would like to have my little well, engagement okay. with Well, Chris, Chris I, I appreciate you being the most mature one because a lot of them were being hecklers and foolish, and they're going to have to account for every other hey, one. Zion, come over to my God channel and tell me that and, and, and consign me God to hell after I curse you. I don't consign you to hell. I would not consign you to hell. Right. That's not my job. That's not my bro, duty. Bro, don't okay. let people discourage you if that's your No, role. I don't. At the end of the day, the word of, you know, I sit on God, and that's it. I okay, don't care so what I man has to say. I got to turn everyone a liar. Be careful. Move slowly. Take your time. Don't. I wish a hundred guys that were like you that would come over and try to Try to burn me down that's with some kind of prophecy. I'm not I just burning dare you down with a prophecy. You see, Dude, you hear yourself, right? Out of the at the end, of, yeah, at the end of the day, I came to you guys. Well, I came to you guys because y'all are supposed to be elders, you know, compared to me. I've been in ministry a, long, a lot longer than I have. So I wanted How long have the you word been God a Christian, says, by the way? How long have you been a Christian, by the way? I've been a Christian for probably, like, it, it's been an on and off thing until recently. Like, that's why I said, if you heard my were testimony, you raised, I understand a lot. Were you, ra were you raised Christian? I was raised Christian, but I departed from the faith because I didn't, full I had a full, it was a false conversion. I wasn't taught proper gospel. Um, you know, so you, you departed then, from the faith that you didn't have and you gave uh, heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Is you that don't what you know did? that, buddy. You don't you know what you said, How do you know, know I don't know it? Are you sure, Chris? Anyway, Are you want yeah, to challenge yeah. my God? Let's do a challenge. Let's see what you got. Yeah, yeah. Wait, we we know you by your fruits, you demoniac. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Okay, no, know Dave. You Dave's not. Dave, you know what? Dave, Dave's not a bad guy. Seriously, you guys. What you I'm guys saying is, when Hold you on. know, it wasn't until what happened in Ohio that I finally started turning. I, I moved to Ohio and I came back to New York. It wasn't until after what happened to Ohio that I, I was like, yo, it's time I get serious with God, and I really started, you know. Sitting on he and he alone says, so Not when might not power by the Spirit of the Lord. I have no part in the day. Myself. Okay, mm -hmm. Zion, like I said, like I said, if you if you want to validate yourself as as a prophet or you think you're a prophet, you know what? You're you're gonna get that verification and it's gonna be able to match the same standard as was held to the old testament prophets. And I would, would suggest you probably research that a little bit. I think it's a three or four fold uh set of criteria. Uh, including you have to prophesy in the name of the true God. Uh, you have to say something that actually does end up coming to pass. Um, mm -hmm. You can't uh, prophesy in the, in the name of a different God and have it come to pass because then you're still a false prophet. And, so, and, and there's, one why, more, I, I, there's one and more. And you can't be upset. Stuff. And you can't be upset if those who are hearing you speak are practicing what we're instructed to do in First John chapter 4 when we're to no, test the spirit. Really there's nothing so wrong with you, that. You, you can't, you can't lift a always, victim card and say uh, that you're being heckled or something like that, like what you well, said. Well, when, you know, there's a difference between questioning and, you know, being very, you know, uh, uh, adversarial. I, 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 speak, I speak as I see it, man. You know, yeah, no, I understand that. And that's why I came to you. So I'm not, I'm not, you know what? Let me tell you something. I'm not going to coddle you and I'm not going to sugarcoat things. Let me tell you something. You think you're a prophet and you're in for much worse than anything you've been dealt here. Let me tell oh, you yeah. Okay. So, so buckle in. Uh, Cause trust me, if you think you're called to this position, this Prophet's is never this welcome is, in his own home. White stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know the word goes. Yeah. It says they're without right. loyal in their own home. So man, I'll tell they're you what, honor, not loyal. We're, we're going to move on. We'll wish you well. we'll uh, I had one other we... question in and if it's all right, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with, well, we gotta move on, you know, man, we really got to move on here. Why don't you email me? Go find my email in the about section. And there I'll you go. Go. You okay. can go have Thank a you, Chris. I appreciate Chris. it. I'm sure you guys will have a good time. All right, Zion. I appreciate right, it, man. Have yourself a good night. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. God bless you, brother. Okay. Let's get uh, this gentleman in uh, Jer Jersey. Jersey, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? Um, I just had a quick question for Chris. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Um, I've and seen this a couple is our, uh, by the way, Jersey, just real quick, guys, this is our last caller. Please don't, no one else come in after Jersey. I'm going to do my engagement with Chris. We're going to collect final statements and we're going to wrap it up. Sorry, Jersey. I just wanted to say that. Go ahead. You're I'm the last. I'm curious time. to know real quick. Unit, are you an atheist? No, no. He's a, he's an ex-free gracer. Um, <laughs> 
I'm, I'm hard to figure. I'm a lot of letters. I'm a lot yeah, of I'll, you know what, JP? I'd have to give you a rundown on Dave. Trust me, Dave's a good guy. He's been through a lot. Uh, and I give a lot of grace to Dave, and I love Dave to death. So he, trust me, he's a good guy, and he's got a real fervor for the word of God in a real serious way. So uh, don't don't take him too hard. Don't take him too hard. He no, loves Jesus. Uh, so so anyway, uh, Jersey, go ahead, man. Uh, you want to go ahead and say your thing, ask your question, give your statement, introduce yourself. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, I just, I've seen a couple of Chris's videos. And I just wanted to get some clarification. If Chris, do you believe people are always demonly possessed or have a demon? I don't use the word possessed, even though the Bible would use that word. I, I say demonized in the flesh because I know through my Bible study that when the Bible says possessed, what they mean is the person is demonized in the flesh. Um, so when I see the word possessed in the Bible, that's the way I view it. So if but, you're saying, yes, yeah, I'm if sorry, yeah. the answer would be yes. I believe people always have some degree of darkness in their flesh. Like Jesus said, if that light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Then he said, if your eye be single on the Lord, your whole body will be full of light. Now we know the only man who ever perfectly did the will of the Father was him. So that's why I believe he himself never had demons. But I don't believe any other man perfectly did the will of the Father, perfectly had their eye on the Father. So therefore, there was some element of their body that had darkness in it. Does that answer your question? I, I understand that nobody's... Um, I don't know, like perfect or whatever, but so my question, no, I don't think he answered it is, do you think people always have a demon? In their flesh, yes. And uh, do you, where does it say that in the Bible? Because I, I really gave, just curious. I gave the verses already. Did you watch the first half of this situation? No, sorry, I missed it. Okay, I gave the verse where Jesus said he knew all men. He didn't entrust himself to men because he knew what was in all men. And uh, in that instance, he was talking about evil, the nature of Satan, was in those men. I talked about how iniquity was found in Lucifer and how the nature of sin is the devil's essence, according to the Bible, and that if someone has sin, and if someone sins in any way, either intentionally or not intentionally, they have the nature of the devil in their flesh. Hey, uh, Smokey, JP wants to get in. Yeah, um, there's a couple different, uh, I almost think it's um, different accounts. Hold on a second. These might just be trolls. Let me check. But Chris, list. if someone is born again and um, has Hold the on Holy real Spirit, quick. Yeah, hold on. I'm so sorry, Jersey. Just give me one sec. Uh, JP, is this you? Fuck yeah, it is, my nigga. All right. Okay, no. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, Yo, JP, guys, is this you? This is me. What's that? Yeah. No, dude, Yo, you're the, the fat frog. fucking piece of shit. All right, okay. Well, there oh, we bro. They don't realize that this is not the channel to successfully troll with vulgarity, right, Beckle? <laughs> You know, right? They, anyway, they don't know you, man. They don't know. They don't know me very well, do they? <laughs> anyway, uh, so just moving for, I'm sorry, special Jersey. night, though. <laughs> uh, we just want to make sure because JP had dropped out, and then a couple of these clowns popped in. So I'm sorry. Go ahead, Matt. Sorry for the interruption. Finish we go it. back to Brady Bunch mode. I can't see everybody. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Sure, yeah. absolutely. All right, go ahead. Jersey, you still there? Yeah. Um. Wait, what was I going to say? Sorry. Um, I understand those are your interpretations. But I wanted to know if sin doesn't have dominion over you once you're born again Christian, what is the point of even being demon possessed? So well, I, I don't well, no, 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 no. Having have you could have a demon and be completely but, not not in agreement but, with that sin. Sin having dominion over you is when your will aligns with the demon. Now, if you have a demon and your will is not aligning with the demon, then sin doesn't have dominion over you. That demon is just trying to use your physical body as a house. And when you're a Christian, what's supposed to be happening is your spirit man 
is pushing that thing out, and it's only a matter of time before God does that work in you. Now, God's, God's word says he's going to finish that work in you on to the day of redemption, the day of judgment. So the God, when, he, when you're born again, your inner man, your spirit, wars against your flesh, like the Bible says. That's why the Bible says the spirit lusts against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. So that begins to happen. So you yeah, can have be, demon. Go ahead. Because our sinful flesh, our nature, whatever, is just we're always going to want to sin because that's just how we were. That's why the New Testament came, because we're not perfect. We'll never be able to make that. So that's why Jesus came. So we believe in him. So that whole sin thing, it's like, what's the whole point of being demon possessed? I don't really get it. But I mean, I can email you and we can go back and forth um, so I can get more details about it. But I had a question for Smokey, too. I don't know. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was muted. I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. Yeah, sure. I'm just curious, why is your name Smokey, and why do you have, like, a Grim Reaper-looking thing? James 4.14, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Who I am and my identity is not important, not worthy of praise. I'm simply here to do some work. And if people knew who I was or if I had an identity attached to me, it would lead them potentially to fixate on things I don't want them to fixate on. So I've chosen a particular formula as to how I orchestrate both my demeanor methodology as well as the environment around me in order to optimize utility based upon my own personal life experiences and what I believe is the best possible way to push messages forward with a sense of urgency considering that we are dealing with the potential gaining or loss of souls. Does that help? Uh, yeah, but it just, it just looks a little creepy. That's okay. It's a little non, it's a little non Christian, but all right then. Well, thanks for having <laughs> well, me. Non Christian, whatever that means. Okay. Yeah, it means it yeah. looks like kind of it's demonic, okay. weird. This isn't even weird. my final form. Do you know what demons look like? No, but I'm saying for what we so, think of so them. So, would looks you be judging weird. that from a cultural perspective, or would you be judging that simply from an emotional perspective, or or is it just it something looks, you kind of? It looks uh, like evil. It looks like evil anime cartoons. Yeah. Evil anime cartoon. Okay. Well, that's a yeah, lot. Of you know, I mean, you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. Well, is all at style. It looks like a. It looks like a Grim Reaper. Okay. But anyways, all right. Thanks for having me here. You guys have a okay, good night. Have a good bro. night, man. Appreciate it. It's like I don't have the scythe, actually. I don't have the scythe out. Oh, by the way, okay. So the Grim Reaper here. I, I did. A, I did one for the Halloween special. Uh, where we discussed ghosts with uh, Dr. Kenny. So there, there's your Grim Reaper, if that helps you guys out. That's the that's the Halloween Smokey for you guys. There you go. Okay, excellent. All right, well, let's move into what I'd like to do is I'd like to have final statements, um, and then I'd like to be able to ask Chris some questions myself. So if anyone has some final statements or questions, yeah, let's um, go ahead and yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get hit that out, out of the way. Uh, go ahead, Veckel. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm getting kind of hungry anyway. Smokey, thank you for opening up the room uh, for everybody here. Uh, Chris, sure, uh, despite my uh, disagreement with you, I, I think uh, you're a true, uh, genuine brother so far. Uh, so, you know, I appreciate the, the you know, the words that uh, you have put out there in the, in, the, in the bravery that you have to come into a room. Uh, so I appreciate that. Appreciate and, uh, you Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully uh, we'll, we'll cross paths again, uh, either in this room or in JP's room or whatever. And uh, to that, what I'll say is uh, Jesus is Lord. He's uh, he's risen and uh, he is the Christ. All right, Amen. Thanks. Amen. Awesome. God, God bless you, Beckel. Have a good night, man. Appreciate you. Love that He's a good guy. We've had some great interactions. Okay. Uh, Dave, news unit, bro, go ahead. And you want to finish up uh, any final statements or questions or anything? Go for it. Yeah, I actually just came in here because I was curious about the one guy earlier on when he talked about that he was possessed with prophecies. Or devils yeah. or something. And I wanted, I forgot who the guy was that said he was possessed with devils. I think he left already, right? Uh, well, no. Well, Chris here uh, has deliverance ministries. Chris up here has deliverance ministry where he, yes, proposes that. Absolutely. Well, what I was trying to do, I, I didn't I, I was just trying to figure out. So there was one guy that said he was having trouble with something. He had devils. And I was just looking. That for was Andre. Who... Yeah, that was his, his Andre was his name. He was in here. So earlier. does yeah. does. 
Oh, so Chris has a deliverance ministry. Do you do you ever try to cast out those demons or devils or whatever you want to call them? And get yeah, he, yeah, clean? he claims to all the time. Yeah, no, Chris claims. Well, then, to well, how long is it going to take to get them out? Uh, Chris, Chris do you do you have a? Yeah, I guess that's a, that's something for Chris to answer. What does he mean? How long is it going to take for a person to be completely free of demons? No, I mean, if you got the gift of deliverance, then how long is it going to take to deliver this guy? Because the apostles and them, they 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 cast him right out, and the guy could see, and the guy was better. And what's what's going on here? Huh, what's going on is you don't know the Bible because Jesus really. Told that yeah, yeah, really. You want me to prove you it? You want to prove it? Prove it to me sometime. Yeah, go ahead. Come on, wise guy. Put your face on. I am so a wise guy. Well, I'll put my face on here. Hold on. Yeah, hold yeah. on. I, I'll yeah. step right up behind here. Yeah. Don't worry about step it. Step up. Step up to get knocked out. Oh, yeah. I'll step right up. Yeah. <laughs> Where are <laughs> you? There. Oh, give him a minute. Give him a minute. He'll do it. He, he puts himself on the camera. Oh, yeah. There what do you got? There he did, is. G did, did the demon legion come out when Jesus immediately asked it to come out? He said, we are legion. He went, they went well, into that, the swine. That wasn't the question, genius. I'm asking you if the demon came straight out. It came out a lot quicker than you and your pal. It's taking you longer. It probably took less than 30 minutes. Oh, really? How do you know? Because I can read. Really? Where does read it, it say? Read it to me. Read it to me. Yeah, let's read it. Let's pull it off. Okay, let's do it. Here, here we go. Because you didn't want to answer my question because you're an ignoramus. Oh, am I? Oh, that's yeah, real cute. Yeah. Yeah, are you hey, gonna hey tough guy. Questions? You know, I heard you your tough shit behind the mic. Yeah, yeah. You want to be tough with me sometime? Yeah, sure. Show up. I'll knock you out. Come okay, on. let's have it. Let's do it. Because you know what? Come I'm going to crack your head in. Really. We're going to cast the demon Seriously. out of Dave with the, <laughs> the punch to the face. Just, just show up at my church and take a swing. Where are I'm, you? Where are you? I'm in Texas, Corsica. Oh, okay. Where? Austin, San Antonio. Abilene. I just told you Corsicana. Are you brain dead? Where the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's just south of Dallas. There you go. That's better. So you're by Waxahachie. Yes. Yes. Well, you got to show up. You got to show up on Saturday. I'll show up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Show up with your attitude. I'll show up with take... my attitude. Twice yeah, and... the attitude. Yeah, and take a swing. Yeah, and then you think you're tough. You... I heard you talk tough. You know, and you you think I know you want this kind of shit. You know what? You deserve yeah. to get your knock, your block knocked off. I'm inviting you to show I'm, I'm up. I'm taking the invitation, up. fucker, and I'll fucking do it. Well, then you calm down. Won't? Calm down and show up and do it. Oh, I'm All looking right. forward well, to this. Because yeah. in the Dave. name of Jesus, we'll see who wins now, you big delay. Dave, record it for us, okay. too. We're, oh, we're I will. All... I promise I will. Please, yeah, please record it for us, too. We want, we definitely want to see it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, beautiful. Okay, well, Dave, thank you for that. Uh, uh, anything else you want to uh, leave us with? Uh... Where'd he go? Where'd he go? We're going to do this. No, you got, no. if you guys want to have a debate uh, before you, I guess, have a fist fight, uh, let me know. And we can uh, set it up for a moderated. Well, I don't want to have a fist fight with them. Meet me I on will. my channel if you want to continue this aggravated discussion. I'll discuss it with you. No, we're going to do it right here. I'm going to send well, you. Well, he might not want to. He might not want this bullshit. Well, I don't right I, care. No, no, I don't I think, mind. No, I, don't I think he wants here. to find out who the idiot is. I don't all right, let's go. Here. Yeah, all right, let's go. All right. I don't, I don't mean to take over the show here. With all right, no, it's okay. All right, I'll tell you what. We can do. No, it's fine. If Chris, if Chris doesn't mind the time, if I again, I told That's Chris, fine. I got all fucking welcome. night. He's not yeah. obligated, but he's welcome as long as he's willing to stay. All right, I'm game. So I don't. I no issue there. TJ, uh, okay. Before we do that between you guys, uh, let's get TJ to say his final thing then, and then we'll we'll move on. Sounds to, good. I'll be standing by okay. waiting. All right, perfect. Go ahead, TJ. Your final uh, statement. Go ahead. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, I just honestly, I've just been listening this whole time. I just want to say, I it seems like uh, kind of a similar thing that I would say like Pado Baptists do, where they make a lot of connections in the Bible, a lot of extra biblical ones, I'd say, and then come to extra biblical conclusions, like with the, you know, because I see no examples of anyone casting demons out of Christians in the Bible. I've just never seen that. You want to go into so. that? You want to go into that? Sure, sure. You can address that with him. I, I was just saying my final words, but uh, I appreciate it, guys. It's It's been good. I've been listening, and uh, yeah, all right, take it Thank easy. Thank you, TJ. I, and I appreciate you hanging out and being part of the show. I'd love to get some engagement, especially about your soteriology and Calvinism at some point. Uh, sure, it'd sure. be interesting to see your take on it. So thank you. Uh, I appreciate your very uh, uh, well-tempered, intelligent young man, and I appreciate you uh, being here. Have yourself a good night. God bless you.
Yeah, you too. Take it easy, guys. Awesome. Beautiful. Okay, good stuff. All right, guys. Well, let's uh, – here, let me switch our format here. So we're uh, – All okay, right, it's time so for ready. Christian MMA. Uh, let's go. Okay. All right, so let's get down to it. Uh, we're going to give opening opportunity to uh, uh, who wants it first or shall I flip a coin? I'll take it last. Here. Okay, Chris, do you want to open uh, with your challenge toward Dave presenting your position yeah, yeah. Uh, supporting my question is, your ministry? Go ahead. Or, or your question. Go ahead. My question away. to uh, – the guy who said, how long is it going to take is when demon, when Jesus asked demons to come out, did they always come out immediately? Yes or no? They talked to him. They didn't, they, but they came out very shortly thereafter. How do you know? Cause I read the scripture. That's how let's go did, look at it. Prove no, me no, wrong. Well, well, did they immediately, I'll, I'll, did they immediately come out or, or not? Are you talking about, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, three minutes, five minutes. Time? What are you talking about? I'm talking about were there times when Jesus told the demon, come out of that man, and the demon defied the Son of God and stayed in there? Show me where that happened. Well, you're not answering my question. I'm trying to make you look stupid here because you're Oh, you ain't going to make me look stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's already happening. Are you going to answer my question? Or are you going to refuse to answer the question? You want to make me look stupid? No. I'm not afraid to be stupid. All right, well, let's, 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 no, let's, I don't want to, really okay. but I have to. It, it, it seems to my recollection in the scripture that it happened. They came out shortly thereafter. Well, did they defy? No, what? Was it a fight? Not much. Not much. Really? That's right. That's right. So did they always listen to Jesus? Yes or no? Oh, yeah, they listened to him. They heard him very well. They knew who he, he was the son of God. They so, even knew. Every, so when he told them to come out, they always obeyed and came right out, right? Well, that one suffered him to go into the herd of swine, so it took maybe, I don't know how long it took. Well, then I why wasn't there you, watching. Okay, were, were, were there apostles that cast out demons that couldn't get the job done, yes or no? True apostles. Yes Seven, no? You're talking about the, the sons of Sceva and all them guys? No, no. You just don't know the Bible. Oh, you what the you... fuck are you talking about? I don't know the Bible. Give me a first. Give me a. Uh, do you, hey, Dave, do you remember? Jesus, you know the Bible. Oh, Dave, Dave, do you remember Jesus' words when he said this one, like the apostles came and said, hey, we tried to cast you, you remember that, that genius? And then Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. Chris, hold on. Don't hold help on. the ignoramus. No, 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 no. Uh, dude, dude, stop. Okay, I'm ignorant. Moderate. I'm just fucking hey, dumb. Hey, okay, whatever. Hey. If you're happy, that's yeah. good. Great. No, let me, let's, no, come on, guys. Let, let's, let's have a little reasonable moderation. No, no, I like so humbling wise guys. Oh, come on, man. Uh, hey, come on. You know. Yeah. Oh, Chris, come on, dude. As if you have the whole Bible memorized. Come on, man. Let's, no, not, I don't. let's not poke. Okay. Well, then let's not no, poke at little pockets. Well, let, let's start there okay. then. Give me the let's... give me the books of the Bible in order, Chris. Let's see how smart you are. Let me right, let hold, on. Uh, hold on. Dave, let's not let's not let's not <laughs> head right down. after you, sir. Don't be a right, hypocrite. All right, hold on. Let's not head down. All right, I'll repeat the one after you, and then you repeat the next one. How's that? God. Okay. Okay. Genesis. I'll give you an easy you I'll give you an easy start. You start with the first book. You I might just get gave it right. It to you. Exodus. Leviticus. Numbers. Deuteronomy. Joshua. Uh, did he get it right? I don't think he did. He did. Oh, he didn't get it right, huh? Judges. Is that right? Well, look who's the ignoramus. Can okay, okay. all right, Genesis. guys. Okay, can we? Let's. Okay, we've had our nice little pissing contest. Let's, <laughs> well, guess let's who's the ignoramus? Back. Okay. All right. Lovely. Okay. Let's get back. Let's get back to the central topic matter. You gonna tell so me the, what's after judges? Okay. We're, all right. Hold on. Let's. Hezekiah. What? <laughs> oh my god. And I know I'm right. All right. Let's let's get let's get back. Please. We're we're on a topic. Chris is attempting to ascertain how long I guess it was taking to remove demons. And we're just reminding there is a story when Jesus said, Oh, you can only cast out this one with fasting and prayer. Uh, some of these, you know, are more difficult than others, was basically the contention, or more powerful than By others. By the way, you got it wrong. It's Ruth, not Hezekiah. Oh, okay. You ignoramus. It's Hezekiah. I've been to Bible school, I, dummy. <sighs> Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. And then first Hezekiah. Samuel, first and second Kings. You missed Ruth, genius. 
I did say Ruth. I just said no. Ruth. He didn't. Oh, he did. Oh, whatever. Okay, guys, please. Can we? Can we just come on? Let's. Can we get back on? I, I, I think it's this, late. I, I, I think still have things, uh, Chris. Yeah. I still have things I want to ask you. Okay, I'm. Please, Dave. Can we just? Can we get this? Yeah, go uh, ahead. I'm just. Uh, yeah, all right. Let's just. Let's just get get finish right, your okay, thing. I'm good. We can. We all right. Ding, ding, ding. The bell rings. We're back in the ring. Let's go. Round two. Okay, round two. Different question. Go. Look, look, come on, uh, Dave. You take it this time. I guess. Go ahead. Question. All right, I'm just going to. I'll just. I'll just continue with this thing about the demons or the devils. But he doesn't want to give me an account. You want to give me the one with the the swine? Is that what you want me to go look at? No, there's two accounts that prove that it takes a long time to get demons out. Well, then just make it easy on my ignorance and just tell me which ones you're talking about. Well, Jesus in the situation with Legion, he asked the demon to come out and the demon didn't listen to him and kept talking to him he asked him to come out in uh well let's look at that show me in the bible yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. Over. i'm looking mark, i got mark and i got it all mark, up here but which one mark five chap mark five verse eight he said for he said uh, it, it says for he said unto him come out of the man thou unclean spirit and the demon didn't listen to him and he okay, stayed well, you're in, in mark five nine you're saying right mark five eight Okay, for he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And for what Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd violently ran down a steep place into the sea and were choked in the sea. Now, what's the what's your point? Well, what did he say? In verse eight, could you bring up my screen, Smokey? So I have uh, it up yeah, here. two seconds. Sure, I'll get it for you. Dave. All right, Hold on. let me let me do this. Unfortunately, I'm a, let's see. Uh, you just got you got to get it shared for me. Yeah, I know. I'm doing it. I'm working on that. Okay, there. Share. Is Mark five on there? Uh, yeah, we see it. Yep, okay, go good. Ahead. All right, I'm looking at this now. Go ahead, Chris. What did he say in verse eight? For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Did the demon listen? Well, he asked well, him, What is thy name? He went on to ask him another question. Why did he ask him more questions? What makes you think you can read between the lines and give me a time stamp that it took four hours for the demons to come out or the devil? No, no, now you're changing the topic. No, I'm not what? changing the stuff. You're, no, you're, no, you're no. reading stuff in there that's not even there. Oh, buddy, calm down. We know you're wrong. No, I'm not right. calm down, but I'm calm. Go ahead, talk. Yeah, yeah. So when Jesus asked the demon to come out, did he come out or did he stay in the man and continue talking to Jesus? Is the if demon change, still in if there? If I wipe my ass with three rounds of toilet paper instead of one, does that mean that the shit never came out of my ass in, in, in 30 seconds? <laughs> What the hell kind of question are you asking? Uh, well, it's kind of <laughs> simple. You don't want to make it simple because then you'd be wrong. <laughs> Boy, your question, you're you're out of your fucking tits. Dude, Dude you really are. That's how you, 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 you want to talk about ignorance. Right, let's, let's... Did the demon come out when Jesus said, come out of the man, or did he stay in the person? It doesn't fucking <laughs> matter. That's the answer to your stupid question. I thought this was okay. the topic we're now we're done. <laughs> okay, I don't want to waste your time. That's it. All right. That's all right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna move on. Thank you, Dave. This guy's an expert. He forgot Ruth and he didn't know it took. Okay, all, all right. Time. Okay, we're we're moving it. Dave, thank you. Thank you for taking the time, man. It's good to see you. I have a good night. Hey, I'll I'll jump in on your next stream, man. I, I appreciate you, Dave. Have yourself a good night, brother. I appreciate you. Okay, beautiful. All right, moving on. Chris, thank you. Who is uh, that guy? <laughs> uh, he, he's Dave, the news unit. We've we've known what? him for a hot minute, and uh, yeah, he's he's had a he's had a lot of experiences with the um, really radical uh, free grace hypergracers like Chelsea Bedell, uh, Jackson. What's his name? Greg Jackson. 
you know, the people that are always getting their prophecies behind their steering wheels and all of their crazy interpretations that allows for people to live any way they want, you know, and still believe that they're safe, just craziness. But, but so he's been dealing with a lot of that. So he, he will occasionally be somewhat live wired. So uh, nonetheless, that's just Dave. And we love like, 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 like when you say that's just Dave, you actually believe that that guy's actually bound for heaven. I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And yeah, how is that possible? Um, Because I take it into a full scope. I've seen uh, what he's been dealing with. I see the work of the Holy Spirit in its life. I don't just look at micro moments. You know, everyone has moments of stumble and even weakness. It's not that we should take the full scope of everything about them from those singular moments, but truly take the full scope. Um, and I do see lots of work of the Holy Spirit in Dave's life. And all of us are a work in process. Um, at one layer or another, which is why I allow my environment to be so free and open, free speech. Um, I allow anyone to come in and say whatever they want, up to and including uh, mild blasphemy, mind you, and I do have a limit, uh, but also vulgarity, because I want them to be able to express themselves and feel that they're welcome in the environment without being shut down, but that they will have their positions answered and answered directly without feeling an oppression of their speech or expression. Um, and also it allows for people to come in and glean the truth in the environment without having an, an environment of hyper judgmentalism. There's plenty of devotional channels where they can get that type of thing here. We're a little more of a battlefield, you know, and since that's the case, the environment has to be structured in a slightly different way. So I allow things that many other channels typically won't. I hope you understand and apologize if in any way it made you feel uncomfortable. I'm never intending to stumble anyone, but in order for no, no, no. utility. Actually, and... I've never felt so comfortable in a long time. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, excellent. Well, I just had a few questions, if you don't mind, and we could kind of wrap up, just have a little engagement. Um, and I'm happy to talk with you anytime. Uh, you're always welcome. My shows always have the link in the description. Um, and anytime uh, you're just not have much to do and I happen to be live and you feel you want to contribute something, just know you always uh, have my invitation uh, with my blessing. So um, here's my first question. Um, and I just had a few notes here. Um, how is it that you have uh, confidence? Because we all know that demons are liars. They're master of liars. How is it that you have confidence that you aren't still being deceived by a demon as if maybe um the demons aren't just kind of playing along with these mm -hmm. things you're doing to convince you you're doing things that you aren't or to ac accept a dangerous or deviant fringe teaching and they're just playing you uh while you think that you're having mastery over them through the power of christ go, go ahead and tell if you think you have a answer to kind of how you build that confidence um that sense of certainty that you're not just uh kind of being manipulated by the demon still even right now go ahead okay because when you're born again you get the holy spirit and you receive jesus christ which is the word of god and according to the bible in the book of Hebrews, the word of God is quick and powerful, and it divides that soul and that spirit. So you can, you, like, the, the Holy Spirit brings you the revelation of what is coming from your flesh, which is intertwined with your soul, according to our belief, and what is coming from your spirit. Also, God gives gifts of discernment. So when you, ha when you have flesh and you have a spirit, and you have the Spirit of God, the Bible says that Spirit of God is our comforter. It will remind us of everything Jesus told us, and it will teach us all things. So even though I'm a being that has this flesh body that I believe could uh, is indwelled by demons at times, and I have a born-again spirit, it's the Holy Ghost that's helping me discern what is of the flesh slash realm of the demons and what is of the Spirit. Does that well, answer your question? Um, not quite, but let me let me try to just push a little bit further with it. Um, you believe everyone has demons. Even you admit that there's at times that you need help with, with demons you have. And you know that demons are, by their nature, deceitful. Their whole point is to try to convince you to go down a dangerous path, possibly of heresy or one of their dangerous doctrines or something of a departing from the truth. So if you do have the demon, you admit you do, and all of us do, 
how do we not know that we're not being manipulated, controlled, deceived by the demon in such a clever way for the demon to make us think that they're cast out when they actually haven't and they're still there? And then we build our confidence and we don't actually right, do anything right. against them. You see what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I see what you're saying. So there's many realms that this would apply to. So in the realm of doctrine, right, how would I know I'm not being deceived? Because I'm willing to contend for the faith and defend my doctrine with the Bible publicly. And if I was deceived, I'm sure by now someone would have pulled that Bible out and, and proved me wrong and made me look foolish. Now, in terms of sin, right, and the actions that we take on the day-to-day -day basis and the decisions we make, you don't always know. There's times that all of us get deceived by Satan on different levels. So the answer to the question is different depending on in what arena are you asking me do i check if i'm deceived does that make sense uh, yeah um if you if you uh yeah and i'll make it specific for you and you can feel free to respond but this is just where my personal inkling would be observationally um your challenge with the trinity doctrine and i'm a trinitarian mm -hmm. uh, but your challenge with the trinity doctrine would make me concerned that that isn't one of those things where you have a deception and that you can call it a demon. I don't know if I'm quite so comfortable. You mean I do, I do have one, you mean a deception. Well, I mean, but see, I, I, I can think that someone can have like oppression or attack without necessarily, I guess, thinking possession. And this is just, just from my frame of reference. I, and I'm willing to, consider arguments in a different perspective but i've i've heard several people weigh in that the idea that uh, possession and oppression can look very similar at various times would you disagree with that when you say oppression do you mean the demons outside the body correct yes yeah correct so n no i don't because when when someone's possessed their nature is to desire that sin because that demon's woven in with their personality. When oh. they're oppressed, we could all say, you would say Jesus was oppressed, right? By, by Satan, right? Um, uh, sure. Well, I, sure. Yeah, because it was an external pressure on him. And especially during his time of the temptation, there was an oppression. Right, you know, right against so, him yeah, sure so, yeah. so by your answer can we tell the difference between possessed and oppressed look at the people that were possessed and then look at jesus who was oppressed and there's a big difference in the way that person's functioning does well, that but there's also a big difference between jesus and the other people too you know that right? is the difference the, yeah. the what i would say back to you is that is the difference. So you would that, say that that oppression isn't even really a thing, just possession. No, oppression, say. oppression can vex the person, but it didn't defile their But it won't nature. manifest like a possession, is what you're right. saying. Right. It did it didn't okay. it didn't defile right, their fine. nature with darkness. Okay. That's fine. Okay, uh that's fine. Uh we can move on to the next question. I was curious about that. So um here was my second question. Um did so I talk... answer? Did did all no? You that... did no. You answered it sufficiently. I believe you did. Yeah, no. That and I'm 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 content with that. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, here's my here's my second question. <clears throat> um, if uh, if the demons, I, the way I understand it, kind of, and correct me at any point I'm misrepresenting. This is kind of how it seemed to be what you were presenting. Um, is the idea that the the demons are really the source of sin? If the demons were all cast out. I think you had said that that person would be sinlessly perfect, basically kind of almost the state of affairs of glorification, not fully, of course, but in the same sense of deliverance away from any pull to sinful actions. Right. Right. They okay. wouldn't, they, they could still be tempted, but they would have no internal pull in their nature to actually perpetrate the sin. Uh, they would have no, they would have no, I'll say it again. They will have they would have no internal nature to drive them to perpetrate the sin. They would have like, no like when Jesus was tempted by Satan, I don't believe there was anything within him uh -huh. that that was driving him 
to go after the sin. Well, but but he was well. Hold on, he was a man, and therefore he was in the wilderness fasting, and he got hungry, right? Right, but that's so he would have. That's but a... but well, hold on. Well, no, but Satan showed up and said, "Hey, you're hungry. Turn this loaf, you know, to bread." And he didn't, because that would have been a violation of the command of God to trust in God the Father in faith. And in yeah, fact, no. actually, one interesting thing, and I'm not sure if you've noticed this or even many people necessarily do, um, for all of Christ's power that he had access to, um, I can't think of a single instance in scripture where he exercised his power singularly for his benefit, ever. It was always for everyone else. But I'm not was... insinuating he did. What do you mean? No, I know, but but I'm just I'm stating that at Christ's position in that instance, if he had turned those loaves to bread, that would have been sin. Of course. So he was tempted to sin. Yeah, I don't deny that. Okay. So he was he was uh tempted on an external level and also an internal level based upon his nature to sin against God to give in to the flesh. It's the same thing for us. I don't believe he was tempted internally. Like, where are you? What What would you Well, go because to the... he was hungry. He has human nature, and the human nature gets hungry. Yeah, and but he wants hunger... to eat. And he's told that he's not supposed to eat. He's not supposed to exercise his power for his own personal benefit. He's supposed to just trust God and have faith in God to carry him through it. So if he had created bread, he would have sinned. So there's something internal to him in his flesh that he possesses. Yeah, but the sin, the sin wouldn't have been making the bread to like feed his hunger. The sin would have been obeying the devil instead of his father's will. Okay. So if uh, if a Christian is, uh, so if a Christian is redeemed and they believe, uh, and they struggle with sin. The, the struggle they're having with sin, the sin that they're perpetrating is because the demon is in their flesh. Did I misrepresent that? Yes, if they're committing the sin. If they're committing the sin. Okay. Yeah. So if they're willfully giving into it, not just experiencing, oh, I kind of want to do this, but they're willfully giving into it, then that is the demon that is is having control of them and ma is it making them do it or is it kind of no. just no it's not making them but it will feel to them like it's almost making them do it because the demons woven in with their nature uh -huh. but it, at the end of the day the demons not because i'll tell you why because it's what the bible says where the god said with any temptation he will always leave you a way out Right. And if you want, I could find the verse and the number. no. I no, I know the verse you're talking about. Yeah, no, I trust you. I trust you. Yeah. Uh, no, I understand that. Um, here's my issue, I guess. Then, and uh, this is this is again going to just be a purely kind of philosophical challenge, uh, just to have this kind of flush out for me. But if the demon is really the reason for the manifestation of the sin, um, how does the culpability really carry to us? or because, the agents well, why, why can't we just pass on the guilt solely to the demon and then it's not us that sins it's the demon that's sinning because like i said it didn't make them so therefore if they did it at the end they still came into agreement so they're choosing to follow the demon right at some point in the process, they are choosing, yeah. Well, so do they really need to have the demon cast out or they just need to deny the demon? They uh, That's a great question. They need to deny the demon, but eventually it needs to come out, whether it's cast out or whether they resist it long enough and it comes out without someone casting so, it. And if they don't get it cast out and the demon ends up overcoming them and they don't resist, are they damned, do you think? Uh, yes, and the Bible okay. teaches that the right. Bible teaches because they're living in rebellion to the moral law of God, right? Well, the Bible says you'll be overcome word for word. It uses right. that word word. Second Peter two twenty is that what you're talking about? I don't know the numbers, but let me see. Can you just give me an idea of what the verse says, and I can probably help you. It says they will come under bondage, and oh. they will be uh. Whoever, whatever master you serve, to that you will you will be brought under bondage. Okay. Let me find it. Take your time. 
I think it says to him you will be overcome, actually. Let me look it up. Yeah, it's Romans 6, 16. I mean... Let me read so, it. Okay, go ahead. Sure. Go ahead. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I, I, we could flush that out probably a little further. That would be probably a deeper conversation just about the, the layers of responsibility to the agent versus the influence. Um, but, uh, but that's, that's okay. That, that, thank you for that answer. That was sufficient. Thank you for that, Chris. Um, one other thing I have, uh, just as a point uh, to lay out there, and I, I'll hear your response, so it's not really a question. I do have one more question after that, and we can wrap up. But just a point to put out. Um, one of my concerns is that this uh, this sounds in some ways like it might change the definition of sanctification in, in some regards. That the path of sanctification is not just the indwelling of the Holy Spirit helping us overcome sin, but it's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which needs, I guess, external help to expel uh, the demons that are entwined in essence with him. Uh, well, they're not into, I don't believe they're entwined with the whole. Well, you said they're entwined with the flesh, and the flesh is us. Well, no, so, but the, in the flesh dwells no good thing. So I don't believe sure. that. I don't believe the Holy Spirit's in the flesh because you would agree it's a good thing. So I wouldn't say that the Holy. Well, Spirit well I would. Is, say, well, hold on. I would say the Holy Spirit is in us, and the flesh is part of us. Like I don't think like the Holy Spirit is just in a piece of us. Like, I believe the Holy Spirit is in us. And we are, if you're a dualist, which I think you are, you believe in body and soul, um, a spiritual aspect and a physical aspect. Um, that collectiveness is your essence. It's what you, you know, it's what you are. So whatever, what, this is my issue with the free gracers, because they'll say, oh no, if you sin, it's just your old man sinning. Don't worry about it. Your new man doesn't sin. It's regenerated. So if you sin and go out and bang a bunch of whores, it's just your old man doing it. You know, that's the type of position they hold. And I, I get a, a similar, I'm not saying it's exactly the same. It's not. But I get a similar vibe from this idea of the demon is influencing you. The demon is the one. Uh, causing you to be in a state of struggle with sin. But I don't uh, think I've articulated that correct. Um, I, I Yeah, I don't think so. I think you've just kind of danced on the edge of it, which is why I'm expressing it. That's all. I, I, well, that... again, I'm trying to be careful with how I'm communicating this to you. I'm not trying to misrepresent. I'm really not. Um, anyway, we can, we can move forward. That's okay. I, my idea of sanctification to me, just so you know, and I'll hear your response to it. Um, it's purely a work of the Holy Spirit. We simply allow the Holy Spirit to do the work in us. And all we have to do is to not quench him and not limit him and not grieve him. And then by being justified, by believing in him, by having the Holy Spirit, sanctification will just happen you will overcome flesh now maybe your position is and correct me if i'm wrong one of the mechanisms to over overcoming the flesh is by using the holy spirit to cast out the demons would i be miss okay no okay, no you you're absolutely that. right it, to me it is the rocket fuel of what you just described Okay. Like a person could be could, could be going through sanctification without even knowing about deliverance by resisting those demons as sin. Okay. So they don't need to think that they have a demon. If they go home and there there's something in them driving them to open some porno and they resist that, mm -hmm. they are resisting a demon. They just don't know it. Okay. They just 
that's my belief. Well, I know that's true, but that's you would your belief. Say, I know. I, yeah, I'm not, that, I'm not quite there happen. yet. I'm not quite there yet, but I am willing to learn, Chris. I'm trying to be really open with the with the idea. Yeah. So, uh, so well, anyway, look, so, look, look. You believe sure. holiness is a person, right? A holiness is a person. You believe the Holy Spirit's a person? Oh yeah, I believe the Holy Spirit's a person. Yeah. Yeah. So do you believe uh, an unclean, uh, an evil spirit could be a person too? You don't believe that? Oh, no, I do. Oh, I absolutely believe an unclean spirit could, could have personhood in, a, in, in the concept of individuality. Sure, absolutely. I wouldn't believe it's necessarily a unequivocal comparison to the same person that we have necessarily. But yeah, right. oh, absolutely. Yeah, there would be a form of So, So sure. let me ask you this. Can you be holy without the Holy Spirit? No. No, then uh, it is impossible to sanctify yourself, I believe. Without the Holy Spirit, sanctification is impossible. But then, then you're why, just striving in the flesh. Then why, when I say it's impossible to be evil without an evil spirit, do people just throw their hands up and say, not bag here? Not well, bag because, here. Well, well, yeah, I'll tell you why. Because in just in traditional Christianity, the idea, they do have a theological doctrine of the concept of the sinful nature. And you know that. You know that, no, but that I they... believe in that. I, I'm not denying that. I'm well, just, I'm just articulating what I believe. Here's the thing. Is here's the, the thing, Chris. The I don't necessarily even really disagree with you that maybe there's lots of Christians that don't give credit to it being demons when it really well could. I just, I also think there's a way to go a little too far on the other side too, and just say it's always a demon. You know what I'm like? There's a problem with saying it's never a demon. And I'll admit that. And I think there's equally a problem with saying there's always a demon. You get what I'm saying? Right. Well, you don't like if someone is, you know, not. Because you said full well, you said earlier, right, that like sometimes you'll go at these people and like they're like, yes, Chris, I believe I have a demon cast it out and you'll do it. But nothing takes. Right. Like, like nothing occurs. And it's like, like sometimes well, we pray for people and they don't get. uh Right. Outward, well, is outwardly it, manifesting deliverance. You know. Well, is it possible that maybe they just didn't have one then? I have considered that for many years and through a very long time, I found out, no, that's not true because many times that has happened and years later, they've gotten deliverance. Okay. And Guys, it, I'm it, seeing, I'm sorry, Chris, one sec. Guys, I'm seeing lots of complaints about timeouts in the side chat please let's there's i haven't seen anything in the side chat that needs timeouts right now guys stop i don't mods basement get a hold of this please i don't know what's going on but uh get that figured out guys stop with the timeouts i'm sorry chris i apologize please yes yeah, smoky let me just let me get into that for a second there was a times that I went into ministries and they told me I didn't have demons. And then I felt them in me and I went home because they, they were too prideful. They prayed for me and the demons didn't come out. And they were like, well, you don't have any. God delivered you. And I'm thinking to myself, but I feel them. You know, like I was like an occultist. I know what it's, it feels like. To have it like God has put me through a firsthand crash course of what it feels like to be demon possessed. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need to guess what it feels like to be demon possessed. Like, I know what it's like to almost break my own leg off with my own arm, one arm. I know what that's like. I felt the power of that in my body. So I know when there's an evil spirit in my body. And through the experience of going to churches right. and having them tell me, oh, brother, we prayed for you. Nothing happened. You're free. Move on with the Lord. And then at night you get home and you feel something crawling under your skin like you're in the Matrix movie. You know, like, no. And then, and then all the people that have come over here, you know, that have not received deliverance at the first time they came. Almost well over 75% of them ended up getting deliverance the second, third, or fourth time they came. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know what I'm saying? Sure. No, I think I know, I know what you're saying. So, and, and look, it's the flesh, man. The flesh is corruptible. Why would Satan let one person be completely clean and then the other guy's got a legion? So one guy's walking around with 10,000 or 6,000, whatever you want to define the legion as, biblically, 
And then you got one guy over here who is zero. Now, don't you think that would become a problem for the devil? Like, he'd be like, we need to get something in this guy. Jesus was always talking about, I have nothing in me. Paul said, in my flesh dwells no good thing. Satan's not just going to let some guy walk around here with the nature of Jesus Christ. He's going to infiltrate their flesh. He's going to do it. Okay. Say someone got down to the last one or two demons, right? Don't you think that would throw off massive red flags in Satan's kingdom? Would you, um, like, would you say you were demonized before you became a Christian? I mean, not. Or were you never well, demonized? Never my history is a little complex, uh, but yeah, I don't. I've never. I, I will honestly tell you, Chris. I've never associated myself with being demon possessed. And I'm not saying I couldn't be. I mean, heck, I could. But I, as far as I've associated or or reflected, no, I haven't. Myself. So, so like no hard sin, like porno, drug. Use. Oh yeah, sure. I've had struggles, absolutely. But it is by prayer and you know what the trust in the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit that that is overcome. Not yeah, no, I understand that aspect. But, but I, I've never had a deliverance done on me of that. Yeah, I, I understand the Holy Spirit could overcome that. But do you really believe if Satan's real? And if uh -huh. demons exist and they right. roam the earth, right, mm -hmm. that you could potentially sit down. I'm, I'm talking pre-salvation post. I don't care either way. But that you could potentially sit down, watch another guy have sex with another woman on porno, relieve yourself to it. And a demon, just all the demons just stay outside of you. And they, they just say, well, this guy's just masturbating here. I ain't jumping in him. Especially when the Bible says that, when they walk in dry places, they find no rest and they desperately try and get into a body. So how could you how could you believe that you can do sins like that? And I'm not judging you for it. I've done it all, too. But how could you believe that you could do sins like that? And you don't ha you didn't have a demon in you when you well, did because well, because my flesh claims, you know, craves fleshly things. And if I am not walking in the spirit, I will fulfill the lusts of the flesh the only way that i can overcome the pull of my flesh is through the holy spirit um and i think here's the thing taking demons just out of the equation for a second if you don't have the holy spirit in my perspective you will not have a sanctifying force you won't have the ability to overcome a flesh nature at all you, you won't be able to conquer sins. You can't do it of your own power. I think that's true. I think that's clear. Well, I would, I, would I agree. Uh, so, so I need to trust in the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and to me, up to this point, it's always been just trusting in his sanctifying work. I've never been like, well, I need the Holy Spirit to help me force this demon out of me. You know, I've never looked at it. Yeah, that but way. that's not your life experience. That's why you never looked at it like that. Sure, sure. Yeah. If, um, if it happened to you, if what happened to me happened to you, you would look at it like that. But possibly, why, you may be that, right. You may that's why right. the Bible says we could only speak what we've seen and heard. That's it. You and if may, you, that's true. That's you know, true. if you've never been in close relations to a ministry that does this in their building, watching yeah. it happen, or or it's never happened to you, look, it's a hard look. I would have never believed it if it didn't right. happen to me. Right. Never. Right. Never. Okay. Well, um, I just had one final question, and I'll give you, which is probably one of my I'll just be upfront with you. This is probably one of my linchpin uh, stop gaps in my mind to to be able to give this kind of position a lot of real serious credibility. Not that I'm not fully doubting it. I and I do. I'm not doubting your sincerity, Chris, in any in any way, shape, or form. I absolutely fully believe you are absolutely convinced uh, by what you have experienced. Well, I haven't I proven it biblically tonight? Um. Well, I, I believe you have you you have proven it sufficiently to your standard. Um, I, I I don't stand particularly really convinced with uh, some of your interpretations and, and usages, but I do understand the position you were trying to take. So right. I just but, don't but, find but, it 
I, I just don't find it as an absolute like airtight type of thing uh, for for the interpretations, at least some of what I heard. I accept that, uh, but I accept that, but I would like to motion that if mm -hmm. that was if your belief was that I misused some of that text. Mm -hmm. Well, just I would have a different interpretation of it, not necessarily a misuse. I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far, but you have taken an interpretation that I would consider to be a little outside the box i guess you would say mm -hmm. um so i would I, I would need a little uh deeper exegesis on some of the points you brought up because again it's it's about the premises and i'm not all all 100 on board with the premises but those would have to be flushed out so and i was just kind of wanted you to have the chance to um really put your stuff out there we can and i'm happy to do this again with you man anytime and delve deeper into this that's fine yeah my, uh, my thing is this it's just like i always give answers like people ask me a lot of questions sure and i don't think i ever hesitate to give a an in-depth answer and reply no i think you've tried to yeah by. no 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 i and, i but, but i, I think if people don't like right if people d feel like i'm like misusing it they should, at that moment, prove it in front of the whole world. Otherwise, sure. that's fine. I'm going to go walk away with my belief. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah. Well, this isn't, I wasn't in any intention to really challenge you hard tonight, uh, Chris. I, I wanted, to, I don't do that. Normally, I give people benefit of the doubt, and I wanted to learn about, more about their position before I'm able to develop a observation or a strong opinion about it. So we're just, we're just getting to know each other. You know, that's what, that's what tonight was about. So, so we now you're going to go into the major objection you have of my ministry, right? Well, one of them, sure. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not trying to drag it into a whole thing, uh, but this will just be one of my perspectives that I do struggle with uh, from where I'm at. I would love to see you have an engagement with uh, my pastor friend, Dr. Kenny, uh, as well, because he does have a pretty intimate perspective on kind of demonology as well, and, and does claim to be very wired into the spiritual realm. Um, and I bet you guys would have an amazing uh interaction anyway i'm sorry my final point my final point and i'll just throw this out here um this is my struggle one of my linchpins uh that would uh be a struggle with me kind of accepting your your full-blown perspective on this um has a demon ever inhabited the temple of the most high god no well we are painted as the temple of God and the Holy Spirit. And so the for me, what I struggle with is the idea that we can be the temple where the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is here with us and a demon is able to reside in basically alongside with the Holy Spirit and can't and isn't just pushed out by his power, by his okay. sancti sanctifying yeah. work. Can I, give you, can I go give ahead. you? Go ahead. I'm sure. going to give go you a more specific yeah. answer to make sure. you understand. Go ahead. Now you asked me, can a demon indwell the temple of God? Right. It's 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 a yes, and in a sense, it's a no because the temple's made up of inner courts and outer courts, and in the Bible, there was no unclean people allowed in the holy of holies. It had to be a certain person mm -hmm. that was qualified to be there. Sure. And in the inner courts, there was no money changers or anything like that, but they were in the outer courts. Sure. And Jesus came and he drove those money changers, who were demons, out of the outer courts. Now, were they in the temple? Yes and no. They were in the temple, but not in the temple. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. I do get what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So um, now I, I would I would motion that when Jesus drove those money changers out of the outer courts, right, with a whip, this is an external symbol of what he does spiritually to the Christian. Are you following me? The I flesh. I, I think I follow you. The the flesh being the outer courts and the inner man, because like you said, the the, the Bible describes our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, but I would motion back. The Bible's very clear where we are born again. And it says we are born again in the inner man, in the inner man. And it says very clearly that in the flesh dwells no good thing and the flesh profits nothing. Now we know the Holy Spirit's a good thing. 
because the Bible says none is good but one, God, and the Holy Spirit is his spirit. So we know it's a good spirit. And, and Paul made it very clear that in his flesh dwelled no good thing. And in Philippians 3, he made it very clear that we have vile bodies. Uh -huh. Now, was he calling the temple of God vile? Did he blaspheme when he said that? No, he uh -huh. didn't. Why? Because he's referring to the flesh. Okay. All right. No, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty sufficient answer. Okay, good. All right. Well, Chris, that's really all I had for you, man. I really, uh, actually really appreciate you being so generous, uh, with your time and, uh, so open, uh, with your communication. Um, I'd love to get either some, uh, debates or some interactions lined up with you, either with me or some other people. So I'll stay in touch. I assume all your info is on your about page. Uh, yeah, my YouTube. email's yeah, it's in the about section. I okay. appreciate it. Uh, sure. Thanks for giving me a chance to defend my doctrine because most sure. people uh, most people just call me a heretic and they don't let me talk. I tried to keep it fair for you. I tried to keep yeah. it fair for you. So I hope you I hope you found it beneficial to that and you were able to express yourself freely and fully. Um, and yeah, man, this was a good time. I really enjoyed it tonight. Uh, it looks like the audience loved it. So uh, yeah, man, thank you for doing it. You're welcome back anytime. So, yeah, man, absolutely take care and uh, have yourself a great night. Thanks a lot. God bless you. Appreciate have a good it. night. Take care, Chris. Appreciate All right. it. All right, guys. Well, I guess we will wrap this up. Uh, I guess Dave and maybe Kincaid wanted to give their final words. Uh, hey, Kincaid, how you doing? I'm going to do a live after this. So if anybody wants to cross-examine me over there, you can come over to my channel. And oh, there you go. You guys can go uh, talk to Dave. Beautiful. Good stuff. Boy, the news unit. Type those in the two news boys, unit. What a, and, you know, what I don't care what you, heretics, you right? talk all along. What's that? Oh, I was just saying how you guys are a couple of heretics, y'all. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, of course. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah so but you remember, you I can be, I can be a hireling. I can be a heretic. I can be a castaway. I can be You're a Jewish I want to be because I'm Osas. Well. I'm Osas. Okay, let me get the news units channel here, J Dave. We need to get your channel on the side chat. So oh, yeah, okay. well, he's doing that. Uh, I gotta read all the sponsorship stuff. Uh, that this stream was sponsored by Chabad.org, obviously C H A B A D dot org, uh, <laughs> and the Clay County Chamber of Commerce, where uh, what you're looking for is back the way you came. <laughs> EpicGamerMoment.com. Yes, that's real. Yes, I own that. Yes, that's my thing. And um, what else we got here? Oh, we got a we got a health and safety awareness bulletin here. Let me see if I can. Uh, all right, so, uh, of course, December is upon us, which is, of course, uh, National Snake AIDS Awareness Month. Uh, it's a very real thing that I made up last week. And um, just be sure to, you know, have your pets spayed and neutered and don't do anything unholy with a snake, especially in a garden with a fig leaf or a sheet with two holes cut out for eyes. Uh, and I think that's pretty much all I had. Oh, um yeah, don't drink and drive. Obviously, Thanksgiving coming up. And, uh, oh, the Discord. Right. Uh, so, Smokey's posted a link to the Discord there. It's always in the uh, description of the video. And I think that it's a pinned link. I don't know if it still is because I know Smokey's trying to get Dave's channel pinned somewhere. Yeah, so, no, I'm, I'm not going to pin it. I'm just going to I'm just going to post it in the side. All right. Chat. Well, it's, the Discord, subscribe. the Discord is where all of the not stream stuff happens, and we're always having conversation situations. Oh, conversations off the air. And yes, I, I yes. A Jew does own the other half of this channel, but I, I very rarely do standalone content here. So you won't have to you won't hear have to hear the nasally Jew drone on about Skyrim for four hours. So Walk walking guys, Jesus. Walk walking guys, Jesus. We might actually cross stream Kink Inc. this week over here on Smokey's channel. Cause um well, first of all, he's got almost nine hundred subscribers over here. Yeah, now. we'll talk about that. What do you mean? What we'll, we'll talk about? We'll it talk about that. Just we'll talk about it. Just let's. Not are talk. are you are you canning my show? I'm not. I'm just saying we have to talk about. What is there to talk about? It's it's. <laughs> you know what? Oh, because of the racism, right? Yeah. The, there's there are racisms and things and stuff. Anyway, it, it's okay. Go go ahead and finish your things. Hmm. Well, 
Well, well, now I'm a little heartbroken. I have to close out the chat. Well, they hurt my feelings. Will Kincaid hit his leg? Would you please? You know, I what? Don't I, you know what? You're not even allowed to say it. There's times I've been like, hey, well, Kincaid, can I stream to your channel? And you're like, oh, no, my audience doesn't want that crazy crap being put out. No, I now. didn't. No, you I didn't. Did. Oh, you did. Oh, you I did. have not. You have at one point. I. Oh, now I wish I got you on the record. That totally happened. Well, maybe you didn't say it in exactly those words, but you're like, oh, like my here we like, go I... with your fucking weasel word. <laughs> oh, maybe you didn't say it exactly like that. Yeah, don't, well, think, I mean, no, don't think you can weasel your way out of this one by mincing words like you do with the other curses in here, you know? <laughs> you're just dodging the question, that's Let's all. Let's wrap this up. For the God. Jewish question. All that's right, the, yeah, I that was the... Up. You know what? You know what? You think you're good? You, you think you're too good for me? Did, huh? did you not? Did you not happen to notice almost a hundred viewers in the channel? Today? I did. I actually mentioned in okay. chat that this All is. Right. Uh, it didn't come from crazy, wild-eyed Jew antics. Okay, this came from a collective evening of doing a call-in show and then an after-show and all of that. That they will be very confused with what the hell you are bringing to the table. I promise you this. Anyway, all right. We well, will, I'm going to at least advertise it on them. your channel. We will, that's, I don't care. We will ingratiate them into the craziness that is. Can, I don't care. You can do that. I was yeah, sure. you know what? That you, you know what? That actually makes more sense to do it that way. Yeah. Okay. Get, is there anything else, please? I'm tired. I want a snack, and you're just going to make this drag on. Can you finish your thing? I'm done. Wow. Okay, good. I love Fucking you, Kincaid. I love crying. you. Give give stop my love. Stop pissing your eyes. <laughs> it's going to be right there. Yeah, I'm going to be pissed, baby, this week. I'll give Ronnie Jr. a big kiss for you when I get home, all right? <laughs> Are you not home? No, I'm at work. I never leave. Oh, my God. I thought you were. Okay. I thought you were. No, yeah. I'll, I'll see you all tomorrow. Maybe I'll do. Nah, you know what? I don't know. I'll do something. I'm going right. to do something. I'm going to do something in the morning, by the for way. All the, yeah, for all the super friends who are staying up late tonight, well, I'll be in the Discord hanging out. Yeah, so. well, I might even stop in later in the Discord. Link is pinned in the side chat, so you guys want to. Depends on how bored I am between now and 5 a.m. See, uh, let's see who can convert Will Kincaid. There you go. Uh, so awesome. Right. Convert Kincaid with two K's. You need a third one to make a trinity. <laughs> anyway, all right, I'm actually done. I, I hope everyone had a lovely evening. We did. We enjoyed it. Have a good night, Kincaid. All Thank right, you. Snake Aids, pee pee poo poo. Beautiful. All right, take care. All right, guys, beautiful. Okay, I am or for it. I'm over it. I'm done. This was a nice evening. I enjoyed it. Thank you guys for being a part of the show. Uh, had lots of uh, dynamic interaction, good stuff on the panel, good stuff in the side chat. Uh, we had lots of new faces over here this evening. Um, I hope you guys had a great time. I enjoyed your presence, your engagement. I hope you found it entertaining, enlightening, uh, beneficial, exhortative. Uh, what in the heck do you, dude, this is like the fourth time you've asked this question. It's stupid as hell to ask this question. The Bible is the presentation from God, which is the standard of our of our search by what is true we test by what is true by what scripture says I, I how would you possibly make the bible an idol when it is the word of god the expression of god to us that is our method and mechanism of discerning that which is true it doesn't stop enough with that craziness okay anyway I, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Uh, have yourselves a very, very pleasant evening. Uh, we may or may not be back with you in the morning for a show. I'm saying 70% chance I'll have a morning show, at least a little one for you guys. So uh, thank you for all the new subscribers. Uh, thank you for all the new faces. I'm glad you guys are here. Um, I hope you all have yourselves a lovely and blessed evening. Uh, peace of Christ to all the true saints out there. And Smokey Saint is finally signing out.